You're listening to the Hour of the Time, and I'm Pooh. And I'm Doyle. And I'm William Cooper. I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ladies and gentlemen, we did uh, listen to Stan Dale and Art Bell last night. Oh. And I must tell you, I am absolutely... <laughs> Ashamed that I even know the man after some of the things that he said that were just outright untruths. And I've known Stan Dale for many years. And uh, the story he told last night about his uh, expulsion from the Air Force Academy and where he went afterwards and what he did and all that stuff is, uh, is a total brand new fabrication that he's never told before. And it's not because he was afraid to tell it or didn't want to tell it. It's because it never happened. Mm -hmm. I've known this man for years, and I know what happened. He's told me over and over and over again. And uh, I've checked it out. And so I know what happened. And last night, he, he just flat, just flat made up a story and told it to the world. Yeah. <laughs> Art yeah, Bell even said, you never told me that before. Yeah, Art Bell noticed it too. He, he said, yeah, you know, I never heard this story. You never told me that before. Yeah. You've told me, you know, <laughs> even Art Bell knew that there was something wrong with that story. Well, that gives Art Bell a little more credit than yeah. he had before. But uh, uh, Stan, I wish you hadn't have done that. I really, really do. Um, I, I don't know why you did it, but I wish you hadn't have done it. And uh, you you really shot yourself in the foot. I got to tell you, mm -hmm. folks. Um, I was watching uh, Crossfire. I haven't been feeling too good today. I feel like I don't have any energy. I mean, I'm not sick or anything. I just don't feel like I have any energy at all. I feel like I've been drained. And I think you know all of this stuff that's going on everywhere is just uh, you know I have more reports on what's going on around this country and the world. Than uh, than anybody outside of the actual yeah. Central Intelligence Agency and the <laughs> Office of Naval Intelligence and Army G2 and, and all of those people. Uh, and I think the reason that I just feel drained of energy is because I'm I'm seeing a terrible picture beginning to emerge. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing literally the uh, the destruction of our. Republican form of government. Mm -hmm. I am witnessing probably, and you are too, whether you know it or not, the last days of the United States of America. Mm -hmm. I agree. And uh, now on the news today, they were asking if Alan Greenspan was going to be able to save the global economy. Ah. Are you listening to me, folks, what I'm telling you? Remember last night I made the statement there's going to be a global Federal Reserve Board? You're seeing, I know you know, you, you don't see it, I see it, and I know a lot of you probably don't even understand what I'm talking about, but you're watching, you're watching global government coming together before your very eyes. You're watching the destruction of the institution of the American presidency, the loss of faith of the American people in their Congress. There's going to be a move toward the parliamentary form of government. You watch it. It's going to happen. They just created a world court to which we have sub subscribed, which means we are no longer a sovereign nation. If that means anything to you, it means a lot to me. And me. And uh, now we're watching the the purposeful creation of a global economic collapse, and believe me, ladies and gentlemen, the entire global economy is coming down around our ears. I predicted that over a year ago. In fact, I predicted in May of 1997 that on October the 24th, the New York stock market would crash over 500 points, and it did. I predicted it right here on the Hour of the Time, and it did. And I told you then that that was the beginning of a global economic collapse. 
And we have been watching it take place. Now, you don't see this on CNN or NBC or any of the communist news networks. You don't hear it from Dan Rather Not or Ted Copulate or any of those, <laughs> those talking jerks. But if you watch the world news, as I do, if you get the world news from all of the capitals of the world, as I do every day, it has happened. It has happened. And now they're talking about putting into place an economic safeguard organization to replace the International Monetary Fund to control the world economy. Now, if that's not one world government, if that's not one world government, will someone please educate me? Will someone please educate me? You see, a government is an economic system, and once you have a world or a global economic system run from one central point, you have world government. That's what's going on. And then I watched Crossfire and became physically ill. Every time I see James Carville, it just makes me want to makes me want to puke. I know the guy can't help the way he looks. I know that, and I shouldn't feel that way, but I can't help it. It's a visceral reaction. Every time I see him, I feel physically ill. You know, if anybody in this world looks evil, James Carville looks evil. I don't know whether he is or not, and I'm not saying that he is, but I got to tell you. The guy just absolutely, I don't believe he has any morals or ethics whatsoever. I think this guy, I, I think this guy is, uh, is, is uh, not above doing or saying anything. And so I, uh, I went through that. Here's the uh, President of the United States under full-blown... <laughs> Uh, he's in a catastrophic situation because of something he did. Um, and it's being exploited as an attack upon the presidency itself. And, uh, and he knows had to sneeze, folks. Excuse me. <laughs> had to turn off the mic. He knows, and all of his advisors know, that uh, he has to make a deal with the Republicans somehow or he's going to be impeached. And I don't think he can make a deal at this point. And here's James Carville running around pretending, mm -hmm. pretending to be defending the president, screwing up his deal with the Republicans, attacking Newt Gingrich and the leadership of the Republican Party. And... Uh, <laughs> the uh, everything is just falling down around our ears, folks, and I don't think it's going to get anything but worse. Nope. Much, much worse. So, um, we're going to talk about all this stuff tonight. And, uh... <laughs> I, got, I saw something interesting today uh, on my sideline, I'll call it. I have to watch TV all day. Yeah. And the uh, the morning shows that are on the news ones. He has to watch TV all day. Yeah, <laughs> it's no good. Trust me. Um, the one where the uh, gentleman stands on the sidewalk in New York asks where you're from. That's the popular yeah. morning show. They have a uh, hi. What's your name? Uh, can you repeat <laughs> the question, please? <laughs> yeah, that one. It's a big one. I can't remember the name. It's got the peacock, whatever whoever that is. That's uh, National Broadcasting Communists. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> They had uh, two special stories today, uh, peanut-free zones. Peanut-free zones? Yes, schools and a uh, coalition of child nutritionists are calling for peanut-free zones. Peanut-free zones. In you're, you're joking. No, because the uh, allergies related to peanuts and peanut butter are affecting kids so severely they want to ban peanut butter. Peanut butter is what I grew up on. Yeah. Every, Every child kid. that I <laughs> knew child, while I was growing up ate. Peanut butter and yeah. peanut butter sandwiches and peanut butter on celery sticks and no. peanut butter in apples and 
peanut butter out our ears. No, they want child, they actually want peanut peanut free zones in schools and peanut free areas in a plane flight because since you're contained within a plane. Are um, these to be corridors surrounding the gun free zone? I that in the biosphere. I don't know. How about the sex free zone? Oh no! Well, I'm sorry. Well, that's, that's in the school. Yeah, that's in it. They're giving out yeah. condoms yeah. and telling them. Right yeah. yeah. And uh, the other story, which really got to me. How could I have gotten so confused? Tired. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What's the other story? The uh, it was a major headline story for them. They pronounced it all over <laughs> America. It's on satellite. Everything about a couple of parents that everybody's looking for because they took supposedly. Here's what they said: these two parents, mom and dad, together agreeing on it, went and took their kid, their child, out of the hospital because they didn't agree with something the hospital was doing. So it's kidnapping, and they want to publicize this horrible story and tell the nation why it's bad that they do this. Now, how can two parents together, how do they kidnap their own child? Well, you can't. Yeah. It was the hospital that kidnapped the exactly. child. Exactly. That's who kidnapped the child. And they made child. a headline story. No one has a right to take anyone's uh-huh. child away from them, a period. Yeah. There was something they didn't disagree. They disagree with the hospital on some basis. And I didn't watch the whole story because I had to flick around to, uh-huh. to some other thing. And, uh, but the headline they were giving it was, These two parents, can you believe this heart-wrenching story? They kidnapped their child from the hospital. Sure. This never took took the child, nothing. They kidnapped their child, the own parents, because the, chi- the hospital had control. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, they tried that when Pooh was born. I oh. absolutely refused to fill out a birth certificate or sign one, mm-hmm. and they told me I could not take my child home. <laughs> I asked the doctor how long he wanted to live, yeah. <laughs> and he changed his mind really quick <laughs> because he saw that I was dead serious, yeah. and I took my child home. And uh, <laughs> I just can't imagine these things happening. I can't imagine people allowing them to happen. I can't imagine people standing there while someone takes their child from their home knowing that they're not going to get their child back. Yeah. They, almost, they can't possibly love those children. They hand them over half the time. They can't possibly love those children. They can't possibly care about those children. Not at all. Not at all. They hand them over. They someone comes and knocks on the door and says, "Well, I heard you spanked your kid." Oh, well, here then, because they think they some agency's got a badge. I was told today to call CPS at my job. <coughs> For what? Because I called on the uh, account and it was a six-year-old. He told me point blank, "Well, my mom's not here. I don't know the information you want. I'm by myself." And when I hung up, my uh, I was told, well, "Why don't you call CPS? He shouldn't be there by." Him. I'm, like, I'm not going to do that. It didn't happen either. Trust me. But. She told you to call CPS, Child Protective mm-hmm. Services, because the child said the child was there alone by himself. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. What's going on? And then, the next headline story I saw, Mayor Bradley died of a massive heart attack, or complications thereof, I guess. The Los up. Angeles Mayor yeah. Bradley? Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, they were, the <coughs> same station was uh, making sure that they pushed him. They were really promoting this guy. Now, I, I'm from California my whole life. Born I away. wouldn't go around admitting that. Well, I'm, I'm going to now. Unfortunately. The whole world the knows now. <laughs> but, uh, it's okay. I was born there. But. <laughs> that's it. But they, uh, they made sure to push him as a great American, an American hero, did more for L.A., did more for the people, did more for California, than any mayor in history. That, that, that. I personally... Looking at his track record and what he used to do, I always thought he was a socialist. <coughs> well, he is. A, he well, was a hey, socialist. He was, yeah, he was yeah, a socialist. Bradley. Yeah, and uh, what he did for L.A. is thoroughly disgust the voters uh, so much that they quit going to the polls. The last mayoral election in Los Angeles, mm-hmm. where when I was there, uh, less than 10% of the registered voters mm-hmm. went to the poll and voted in the mayoral election. Now, that's less than 10% of the registered. registered voters, which means it's probably around 1% of the entire population of the city mm-hmm. elected the mayor, which tells you that nobody in L.A. thinks that their vote counts or that it's even worth going to vote mm-hmm. because of the the uh, 
crooked politics that they have. Oh, there. yeah. I used to see on the news back home where Mayor Bradley was making deals with uh, foreign countries. <laughs> I, I would. He met with the Japanese this and that. For the, remember the offshore logging? Uh-huh. They, they just take the, they buy the logs at nothing, get them over 12 miles offshore, uh-huh. sell them, and bring them right back and sell them. Yeah, and, and, with, with, and raise the price yeah. about 40 <laughs> times. And yeah. they were only buying the best wood, too, yeah. the very best wood. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. I certainly do. Mm-hmm. Well, I can't do that, can I? Ladies and gentlemen, what <laughs> what are we gonna, what are we going to do what are we going to do and you know that's what i'm asking you tonight what are we going to do we have uh, stripped ourselves of military we have no more retaliatory strike capability we have uh, absolutely um, no more icbm capability to deliver atomic weapons across the ocean. All of our B-52s, or most of them, not all, most of them have been chopped up into several pieces in the Arizona desert by a huge guillotine, by the way. A huge guillotine. This big, huge guillotine knife lifted up by a crane is dropped on each wing next to the fuselage, and then the fuselage is cut in half. And there they sit. Our military servicemen and women are demoralized. They uh, have been cut back to almost nothing. They're working their butts off. Hardly get to see their families anymore. Our reserve Forces, combat ready reserve forces have been deactivated and they're now all support for supply and uh, transportation and combat service support. Combat service support is what they call it. We have uh, we have uh, lost most of our major industry. We have become a just as I predicted, uh, you know I wrote this in my book years ago, the United States would become a service economy. Oh yeah. And that's exactly what we're becoming. Uh, nobody trusts government anymore. Nobody believes government anymore. We cannot find one politician anywhere who is not one of the most despicable chronic liars that you've ever seen in your life. And as if that isn't enough, the American people have accepted that that politicians lie and don't think anything of it. Don't think anything of it at all. And now the... uh, Office of the Presidency has been made a laughing stock. Congress is a joke. Our institutions are becoming silly things that nobody really puts any trust, any credibility, or any uh, any stock into. We are fractured like we have never been fractured before. The divisiveness running through this country is absolutely unbelievable. Everyone is pitted against everyone else. And everyone seems to be falling right into it, believing it. They have lost all concept of the principles and ideals that created this country and should make us all one, all one Americans devoted to the preservation of freedom for all people. Instead, we want more legislation. We want more social programs. We want more control by government. We want bigger police forces. We want, we want, we want We want, we want, we want, we want more laws. We want the drugs and crime off the streets. And polls tell us that Americans are willing to give up their rights to get the drugs and crime off the streets. Blacks hate whites, white hate black. Blacks hate Jews, Jews hate everybody. American Indians 
have been disenfranchised and feel that their culture has been stripped from them along with their land. Orientals and Jews isolate themselves in self-inflicted ghetto communities. Blacks, while reaching out for desegregation and wanting to live in mixed racial neighborhoods, congregate in the inner cities where crime, drugs, and misery runs rampant. Homeless abound everywhere. You have lunatics on the radio telling you that we're going to be invaded any moment by aliens from outer space. Mm, the peace squadron. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, everything else in the world that you can think of. Earth changes. Tonight on Art Bell is going to be, who is it? Sean David Morton. One of the biggest phony, fraud, fake liars that have ever populated this planet. I know him personally. He called me in 1989 and told me on the telephone that he was the son of Satan. At that time he was an actor sent me one of his publicity photos. Wrote me letters faithfully all the time, and then when I went up to Groom Dry Lake, he was there, followed me around like a little puppy dog, claiming to be the world's greatest expert on UFOs, yet he didn't know anything about them. Never had a college degree in his life. One day, and the next day, he was a doctor. A doctor. The next day, a doctor. (laughs) <laughs> and now, he predicts, makes predictions, like someone else I know, Michael Scallion. You know, anybody can do that, ladies and gentlemen. There's a mathematical science to it. Anybody on the face of this earth can predict that there's going to be an earthquake in California tomorrow, and they will be 100% correct. There's earthquakes every day in California. <laughs> earth changes. Have you seen these maps of the earth changes? You should listen tonight, though, to Art Bell. and You can get an education on uh, on how a con man operates, because that's what he is. Mm-hmm. And you're going to hear one of the biggest con jobs you ever heard in your life tonight if you listen to Sean David Morton on Art Bell. It will give you a good education. So I'm telling you all, you should listen. I'm not trying to increase Art Bell's credibility or ratings or anything else. It's a good way to find out how Americans are being scammed and uh, shuffled off into cul-de-sacs where they chase their tail forever, never accomplishing anything. Will of the Wisps. Will of the Wisps. Do you actually believe, ladies and gentlemen, that somebody can sit down and draw a map showing the exact new coastline after the Earth changes. According to the map, uh, I'm sitting on prime multi-billion dollar oceanfront property. Right. And should make out really well in the deal. deal. (laughs) Come on, Sandra. And uh, at the altitude we're at, we have no no fear of being flooded by the sea, no matter (laughs) how much ice melts anywhere. I heard a figure touted recently, that uh, the ice cap over the Antarctic continent is melting. Mm -hmm. And that if it continues to melt, the oceans of the world will rise 200 feet. Now, ladies and gentlemen, most of the Earth's surface is covered by water. The Antarctic continent is a very small portion of the entire Earth's surface, If it had ice covering it 200 miles high, it couldn't raise the sea level all over the world 200 feet. But that's what you're supposed to believe. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I heard that. This is incredible. They say 76% of the earth is what I've heard covered with water. This is incredible, ladies and gentlemen. We have people off chasing everything except what they should be chasing paying attention to everything except what they should be paying attention to. 
scared to death we're going to be invaded by extraterrestrial beings from outer space while everything is falling apart around them and they don't give a damn about those things. <laughs> the neutralizer. This is incredible. Has everyone lost their mind? Has the entire world, you know, tripped right over the edge? Are we in free fall without a parachute here? Are we, you know, is anybody even trying to find a D-ring just in case they might have put one on and forgotten about it? I don't see anybody doing that. I don't see anybody trying to do anything about the divisiveness in this country. I see everybody falling into the trap and just dividing more. Mm -hmm. It's like cells that split. This cell splits and you got two people fighting each other. They split, now you got four. They split, then you got eight. They split, you got 16. And it keeps doing. We keep becoming more and more divided. Remember when there was one Christian church, the Catholic church? And then Martin Luther tapped that thing on the door while he was wearing the ring and using the seal of the Rosen Cross. The Rosai Crusai. <laughs> he didn't do that because he believed in what he tacked on that door. He did it intentionally to split Christianity. And it's been splitting ever since. For all of you who think that Judaism is united, you're wrong. There are just as many splits amongst the Jewish religion. The only one I don't see that happening in is, is uh, Buddhism. You see it happening amongst the Hindus. You see it happening amongst the Muslims. You see it happening to every religion and every people and every institution. Everything in the world is breaking down. Splitting up. And all the splits are aligning themselves against all the other splits and all the other people. Did you ever think that you would hear somebody talking about the left and right wing in Israel? <laughs> and that they're pitted bitterly against each other? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's true, folks. It's happening. And now secular Jews are split against Orthodox Jews. And then you have Messianic Judaic sects. You have those that follow the Kabbalah, the mystical study of the Kabbalah. And then you have a lot of people that don't know anything about Judaism or the Kabbalah using the Kabbalah as if they know what they're talking about to run their lives. And it's an esoteric tome. I'm telling you right now, they can read it all their life and they're not going to know anything about what it says. Because they're reading it as if it's a literal interpretation. When it is an esoteric metaphor for much deeper philosophies. Much of it is based upon symbolism. And the mystical meaning of numbers. You have so-called Christians who quote extensively from the Old Testament and ignore everything that Jesus Christ ever said. <laughs> you have Jews now who are Jews for Jesus. How can you be a Jew for Jesus? Jew is not a race. Jew is a religion. You can't be Jews for Jesus. You can be Christians for Jesus. Or you can be Jews for Judaism. But you can't be Jews for Jesus. We have African Americans. What in the hell is that? A guy born in the Bronx. Yeah. He's yeah. black. My name is Kwamambo Popupo. I'm an African American. Mm -hmm. Baloney. You're either an African or you're an American. But you're not an African American. Somebody has thrown you a curveball. You don't know who you are. You're confused. Now we have... <laughs> We have Asian Americans. Asian Americans. There's Hispanic Americans. Irish Americans. Someone once called my wife an Asian American. And uh, <laughs> she 
She took great affront to that. And so did I. She is from Taiwan by birth, but she is an American. She's an American. And she believes in all the principles and ideals and freedoms and everything that all of us do. What's going on? What is all this about? Are you a Christian? No, I'm a Seventh-day Adventist. Oh, aren't they Christians? Yes, but uh, we don't believe in all the nonsense that all of you other Christians believe in. In fact, we don't believe that you're Christians because you don't believe what we believe. Well, what are you? I'm a Southern Baptist. Really? Gee, how can you be a Southern Baptist when the Southern Baptist Church has now been taken over by Freemasonry and is run by people who worship the Son and, and Lucifer? I mean, that's not Christianity, but it's the truth. And then you go to a Masonic Lodge and, and you ask them uh, if it's a religious organization. They say no. And then they point to the Bible on the altar. <laughs> I tell you that they believe in God and that's what the big G stands for and that they're Christian and that the Bible proves it. But yet you go down the street to a Masonic Lodge that is populated by the nation of Islam, black people who believe the religion of Islam, and they will show you that they have what on their altar? The Koran. They have the Koran on their, on their uh, altar. So how could the Freemasons be Christian? If you go to the Far East and visit a Masonic Lodge, you're liable to see the Bhagavad Gita on the altar. You read Albert Pike, and it says that it absolutely, without any doubt whatsoever, is a religion. He says it over and over and over again. They thought so much of him that they took his body and entombed him in the house of the temple in Washington, D.C., and they made his book, Morals and Dogma, required reading and was, were given to every Freemason when they were initiated into the lodge. Yet they say, if you quote Albert Pike to them, they say, Albert Pike does not represent nor speak for Freemasonry. Well, you say, who does? Well, they'll tell you nobody does. And the reason they tell you that is so that you can't pin them to the wall with their own words. Everyone, ladies and gentlemen, today is full of crap. Just absolutely full of crap, lying to everybody else, and are all divided against everybody else, and everybody has an agenda, and nobody's agenda except mine seems to be freedom. Nobody seems to care about freedom anymore. Except for just a few of us. They've lost it. They don't even understand that without freedom they can't even stand there in these divisive institutions and lie to each other anymore because socialism and communism, once they reach the ultimate power that they're striving for, won't allow it. No dictator in the world would ever allow it. You think they do that in uh, Iraq? You think, uh, you think Saddam Hussein would allow that kind of thing? No. You think they do it in Cuba? No. No, not on your life. So what's this all about? Anybody got any idea? What are we going to do? You're all sitting out there waiting for me to give you an answer. I know what's going to happen in the future. But I don't know what the answer is. Now, let me explain that to you. You see, I know the ultimate confrontation that we are being propelled into is going to be an armed conflict between a lot of people. How it's going to come out, I haven't got the slightest idea. I know how I would like it to come out. I would like a restoration of Republican constitutional government. Freedom. I would like freedom to reign all over the earth. For all people in all religions everywhere. 
But I can't guarantee that that will happen. And I know enough about war, and I've studied the history of the world enough to know that once such a conflict begins, the outcome is uncertain at best, and somebody that nobody has even thought about could rise to power with some form of government that nobody's ever heard of or even remotely dreamed of, could emerge out of something like that. And I know that all through it, the sheeple will be begging for the end of it, and they will be willing to make any kind of a deal with anybody who can guarantee them peace and quiet and security. I know that. Mm -hmm. Because that's the nature of sheeple. Right, Dwayne? Yeah. I never understood that concept of peace and quiet and security. But if you look back through history, you can see footage, uh, film, or still pictures. Any of those institutions that supposedly guarantee that, all you see is sirens and spotlights and dogs. That's right. That is exactly what Hitler (laughs) said to the German people. I'm going to do away with crime, and I'm going to do away with poverty, Mm -hmm. and I'm going to do away with all the hardships and all of that kind of stuff. We're going to purify the race, and we're going to make Germany the ruler of the world, the most powerful country on earth, and all Germans are going to be happy and secure, and uh, we're going to get rid of all the Jews and all the blacks and all the Catholics and all the Christians and all the the Poles and the the Russians and, you know, the the Slavic uh, peoples and... uh, you know, and everybody, I don't know how this happens. If anybody comes to me and say, Bill, we've got to do something for your own good. You know, the first thing that comes into my mind is I just want to, I want to grab the guy and, and, uh, and, and uh, put him on a Greyhound bus to, to Alaska. That's what I want to do with that guy. I don't want him doing anything for my own good. I don't want him to even think about what he can do for my own good. Because every time somebody sets out to solve all the world's problems, they screw everything up. I mean it, they screw everything up. You know why we're in the state we are today? The machinations of social engineering has brought all this about. All of it. That's exactly where it comes from. Social engineering. And it's happened right in this country and it's been done to us, by us. By those of us who think they know what's best for all of the rest of us. They started young too. Yes, they did. They're in school. Start them very young. Right on your parents. <laughs> What do you think this this uh, thing going around in school now that before you can't graduate unless you've performed so many hours of community service? Uh, that, to me, that's free labor. It's sure labor. It's, it's enslavement. If somebody is forced to do labor for somebody else against their will, that's slave labor. They're not being paid for it either. No. How about that? So in about a minute, I'm going to turn over the tape, and then we're going to open the phones. And this is what we're going to talk about tonight. What are we going to do? What do you think we ought to do? Do you think we ought to do anything? Do you think we ought to just sit back and let this take its course and uh, rely upon the benevolent hand of fate to decide the future of the world? Hey, man. <laughs> Out of all the possible... Out of all the possible courses that we could take, that scares me more than anything. That's why I can't stand all these people who are sitting back saying, I'm not going to get involved with worldly affairs because I'm going to be raptured. I am one of the 144,000 and I'm not going to be around to deal with this. You'll deal with it. I don't even want to know about it. Don't want to talk about it. I don't even care. I am not of this world. <laughs> well, then get out of it. You know. Okay, I'm going to turn the tape over, and then we're going to open the phone. Three, four, five, seven, eight is the caller line. 
Yes, it is. That, that, uh, what you were saying reminds me of what I was told by uh, a big media producer about yeah. three weeks ago, remember uh-huh. that, four weeks ago? Uh, well, we don't want to air anything that might cause controversy. We just want to preach. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and they will not just air the right side of any problem. No. They want two sides. They want two people who will tell you that they are both right, but they are both saying exactly the opposite thing. Good evening. You're on the air. Hey, how you doing, Bill? Well, I, I'm, uh, I'm doing. Hello. I hear you. I'm glad to hear you back on the air. Thank you. Um, I got a few points I want to get on. Sure. On uh, the peanut butter fiasco. Um, Isn't that the darndest? Yeah, go ahead. Most of the cows in the nation are fed on peanut hay. Most of the what? Most of the cows in the nation are fed on peanut hay, so they're going to have to stop giving milk out to school. But, <laughs> well, um, well, you know, part of the, uh, the the movement toward the new age and the new world order is to destroy the beef industry. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and go to an all um, um, non-meat diet is what they want. Yes, sir. Never trust a vegetarian. Never trust a vegetarian? Right. Why not? Oh, okay. Um, the second point, you know, you're talking about what are we going to do, what are we going to do, you know, yeah, where yeah. do we draw the line? Well, I've already drawn my line. I'm just asking all of you, what what, what do you think well, we, we should do? What's next? What, uh, you know, how do we get out of this this corner that we've been backed into? Well, that's, that's, that is a, for someone smarter than I am, but what I'd like to, to hit on. Uh, my friend, there's nobody in this world smarter than you are. All human beings have the same brain capacity, same brain capabilities, uh, and the, the same opportunity to use it. All you got to do is make them wheels turn, and uh, it's true. How do you think Bill Clinton got in the White House? Uh, I think he should be impeached and prosecuted and hung for treason. Monica Lewinsky is just another issue. Uh, it's immoral. Well, I think we might regain some respect for our government. Yes, sir, absolutely, 100%. See, if they let all this slide by, who in the world is going to trust or believe them ever again? Absolutely right. About anything. But hit it on one more thing. You know, when the, the, the first Revolutionary War uh, hit, uh, when they went to meet the British at Lexington and Concord... See, you do know something about the future. The you said the first, first, the first which means you know there's going to be a second, yeah. don't you? Uh-huh. I do, too. Uh, well, we've already had the second one. Uh, uh, I don't know if you can tell by my accent, but I'm a southerner. <laughs> all the, uh, all the government regulations that we're getting right now. Uh, don't, uh, don't think for one minute that the Civil War was inspired by what you think it was. Oh, I, I, the I Civil War that. was a manipulation by England to divide the colonies against themselves in an attempt to regain control in this country. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and Lincoln didn't go for it, and neither did the South. They refused to borrow money from the from the Bank of England. Right, right. I uh, read that, agree with you 100%. But uh, all the stuff of <laughs> reconstruction that was crammed down our throat is uh-huh. in nationwide now. Yes, uh, yes it is. But the preachers, uh, when they started, when they marched to meet the British, of course the British were coming to disarm them. Yes. Most people don't realize that. That's you're you're talking mean. about Lexington yeah. and Concord, yeah. And they all left the church service. I don't remember the preacher's name, but he preached a fire and brimstone of serving God and defending your liberties and your land. And they marched out from the church and went and met the British. Opposition to tyrants is service to God. Absolutely. Um, hit one more thing and I'll get off the line. On the rapture. Uh-huh. I have, I'm only 30, I'll, I'll be 37 years old tomorrow. I have read the book of Revelation, I would say 12 times, all translations, King James, NIV, all, all of them. Um, the rapture, if you take the rapture out of your mind completely, the book of Revelation makes complete sense. Most people say, well, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. But if you take the rapture theology out of the book of Revelation, it's laid out perfectly clear 100%, and you better get ready because there is some trouble coming upon this land. Well, I don't think we need any book of Revelations to tell us that. I look around and see it everywhere. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for the call. Thanks for calling. <laughs> we didn't talk about-
Yeah. Yeah, and uh, you know, for those of you who don't know it, it wasn't just Paul Revere who ran, you know, rode through the countryside. It, it was a whole bunch of riders. Paul Revere was used as the uh, as, as the as the icon of the whole movement. Actually, good evening. You're on the air. Yes, sir. Uh, familiar with this Promise Keepers movement? Yes, I am. listening and you're, you're a member of that movement, listen, read my lips. You're full of crap. No, I'm not. It, are you a part of the Promise Keepers? Oh, no, sir. I'm not talking to you. It's a, you're not listening to me. I'm talking about the Promise Keepers. They're full of crap. Oh, yeah, I agree with you. All of these movements, they're full of crap. They really are. And if you listen to the sermons at the Promise Keepers, they're not God worshipers. They're phallus worshipers. They worship the male sexual organ. And the way to split everybody up. Uh, one comment on the base. Why do you think it's for men only? Yeah. See your point there. And guess what? The Freemasons do too. Why do you think when they die they put a obelisk on their grave? You know the. Uh, <laughs> That's the symbol of the famous of Osiris. Yeah, that's why they buried his body in the house of the temple in Washington, D.C., the same as they buried Lenin in the wall of the Kremlin. That's why it, they did it, because he's just a crazy old fool, and then, you know, he, you know, he didn't, he didn't uh, speak for Freemasonry. I read the Scottish Rite Journal at the library, uh -huh. and they covered the story of local lodge was actually having an Albert Pike Day, you know, honoring him and says, Yeah, he's one of their greatest heroes. He hey, boy, guys, we'd be proud to have him as a brother. Right. Today. Yeah. Well, he he uh, put to pin the he, he took out of the hidden esoteric language and put to pin the philosophy and the religion of the Freemasonic Lodge. Right. Okay, I'll let you go. Okay. Thanks for calling. Thanks for calling. And basically, it's the Luciferian philosophy. He said it. Adam and Eve were held prisoner in the Garden of Eden by an unjust, vindictive God. They were set free from the bonds of ignorance by Lucifer through his agent, Satan, with the gift of intellect. And when they took a bite out of that apple, they became as gods. Good evening, you're on the air. Yeah, Bill, this is Phil in Alabama. Hi. Uh, from what I can see, uh, <laughs> we'll have two choices here. I think, I think that... Uh, or the sheeple will either be sheared or you'll have a choice of either becoming a patriot or a slave. They're already being sheared. I know. And, and wait till you see what happens over the next month or two. Uh, if, you've got, if you've got money in the stock market, man, I'm telling you right now, you better listen to me. Better listen very closely to me. You better get it out right now. Because the whole thing is coming down around our ears like you never, ever could even imagine. Oh, absolutely. Uh, the, the banking system is... <laughs> Well, that's that's your opinion. Well, it's one of them. Yeah. Okay. But uh, I think uh, if if we don't restore the contract of the Constitution for the United States of America, uh, we're going to be in big trouble, real big trouble. That we have no choice. Yes, you're you're correct. If there is not a restoration of constitutional republican government and the guarantee of freedom. In this country, then the whole world, including this country, is going to fall to enslavement as human beings have been enslaved throughout history. Exactly. As blacks are enslaved in their ghettos and all of the people, not just blacks, but all of the people in the inner cities and in the, in the places where they take drugs are enslaved through the euphemistic enslavement of drug addiction. Oh, sure. That's well, it's brought up by the Freemasonry. They support and they bring in the drugs into this country. 
Well, i got news for you. It's not the Freemasons who are doing it. It's the intelligence community of the United States of America and other countries, all operating together with each other. The KGB and the CIA working together. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And the Mossad uh, and the British intelligence yeah. organizations. The England has been involved in, in, uh, in the drug dealing and drug smuggling uh, throughout their history. That's how they controlled populations. It is a script. You go down and you go back through history and study ancient Rome, and you will see them doing the same things today that they did then. Oh, sure. When, when, when Cicero couldn't get his way, Cicero would, would cause his thugs to go out and, and destroy and burn and sack a, a, a Roman government building and, and beat up and kill a few citizens. And then they would declare that terrorists were loose in the city, and they disarmed the citizens of Rome, and, 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 and piece by piece dismantled the Roman Constitution and changed the Republic into an oligarchy and then into a dictatorship, and then they made the headman a god. And then it became a theocracy. Well, your book was in 91, wasn't it? My book was published in December of 1990. I did have a copy of it. I loaned it to a friend, never got it back. But you know what? It sounds exactly like what you had in your book. I mean, almost exactly the way they had it planned out, and that's the way it's working out right now. Exactly. And, and that's and that's I, why my book is the number one bestseller and has been since it was published in the underground um, um, press. That's why I couldn't get it back from the lady I loaned it to. Nobody ever does. I hear that complaint all the no, time. No, that was a big mistake <laughs> for me, but it's good to hear you on the planet now. At Thanks. least uh, the signal is strong down here, and uh, we can understand you now, and we have a little trouble with that other station in Miami. Yeah, well, I am too. I see I was in the, I lost my magnetic shoes, and I was drifting off into space, and then Al Wiener threw a rope up there and grabbed me and brought me right back to the planet, and here I am. Yeah, it's good to have you on for three hours now. You can really do something. You know, one, one thing I wanted to hear. Well, I'll tell you what. If we don't get a lot more orders for our products than what we're getting, we're going to go to two hours very quickly. All right. I need to call and get a, a write and get a catalog, a list of the products that you have, because I'm sure there's a lot of things on there I'm probably going to need. Well, I, you probably will, yeah. Yeah, especially information. I think that's the key to uh, survival in this next century is going to be information. What you don't know can hurt you. Information is the source of all power today. Exactly. Well, they're using it against us. We need to get up uh, and re-educate ourselves. Mm -hmm. We've lost the ability to think. Yeah. And, uh, you know, lobotomized by the two, and we, uh, we for we're forgetting what the, what the prize is. What's yeah, don't, don't let the National Education Association teachers off the hook. Most people are lobotomized in school by their own teachers. Oh, sure. Well, look at the socialist movement that controls the education in this country. Yeah, well, the NEA is a socialist uh, organization that was created to change uh, the mentality of the American people. Sure, it's Rockefeller and Carnegie. Well, right. actually, it was John Dewey. Dewey? Yeah, and he made no bones about what he was doing, and the leadership of the NEA has spelled it out all over the years. I mean, it's on record. It's no mystery. Right. I wanted to ask you, you mentioned once about a book called The Mystery of the Ages, The Mysteries of Babylon. Is that the same book or two separate books? Um, I don't recall what book you're you're talking about. We have a lot of books here. Yeah. And I read a lot of books but, all the time. And my library is now packed in boxes in storage, so I can't even walk in the next room and look on the shelf and see if there's anything and, there that like that. At one time you did, I think, 45 hours on the mysteries of the ages. and uh, Oh, Mystery Babylon, yeah. Babylon. Right. Yeah, right. That, that wasn't from a book. That was from years and years and years of study and research into the hidden mm -hmm. religion and esoteric uh, behind the veil true movement of the Illuminati that exists at the highest levels of all of these so-called fraternal orders. Who's at the top of this? There's yeah. nobody at the top. There's not one person who rules. Uh -huh. It is a consensus uh, formed uh, through... All of the teachings and the and the esoteric uh, um, plan that they've been following for hundreds of years. Right, and I, I noticed that when you did broadcast that, you said it would blow over a lot of people's heads because of the symbolism involved. And then you mentioned the Luxor Hotel in Las Vegas. I've been in there. I used to work in Las Vegas, and 
Uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, the plants had the formaldehyde, and everything is like dead. And they even the smell of death when you walk in. Yeah, it really. certainly is. And if you look at the, the video, when Bush toured it, when it first opened, there's no sound to it, but uh, you, you get this creepy feeling. You get this, like, this tingling in the back of your neck. You know? <laughs> you're very perceptive. Well, uh, good luck to you, Bill, Thanks. and uh, a long-time listener. And there are people out there that uh, do listen and haven't spoken to you before. And uh, we're just so happy that you're on the planet now. We can hear you. And uh, we got our pencils and paper here. And we're going to get the action done that we need to do because we've got no choice now. We, it, we're up against the wall. Okay, hold on just a minute. All right. Across America and around the world, you're listening to WBCQ, Monticello, Maine, USA. Okay. Um, the legal and lawful, by the, by the rule of laws, is, you know, we've, we're trying that. Apparently, it's not working because we're being blocked by... We're, 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 not, we're not under the rule of law anymore. They're making it up as they go along. Oh, right. They right. are not obeying. They're so far outside the law, it's unbelievable. Right. They're so far outside the law that you have no prayer if you ever get hauled into one of their courts. Exactly. You can, you can you see, you'll present your defense or your case according to the law, and they don't go by the law. They don't go by the Constitution, and if you mention the Constitution in most of these courts, they'll tell you if you mention it again that they'll they'll hold you in contempt and throw you in jail. Well, exactly. You know, you have lawsuits that uh, have been sued against the um, the United States because of the United Nation and, 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 and the sovereignty of this country invading the sovereignty. And, and what has happened is that the judges won't even hear the cases because they're saying you haven't even been damaged yet. There's nothing we can do. You know, and uh, it's just like... They're crooks, they're liars, they're traitors. There are no honest men sitting in federal court judge benches. Yeah. Period. Right. They are liars. They make up the law as they go along. They destroy people every single day. And they let the government and, and uh, um, its, its uh, police agencies get away with everything. Right. Including mass murder. Oh, exactly. Look at the Waco. That should have been a wake-up call for this country, but... Uh, well, it was for many of us. You no, know. it should. I know it was for me. When I saw that, I said, well, next thing will be a garden plot and cable splicer, you know. And uh, I'm afraid that's the way it's going. Well, that's exactly the way it's going. Exactly. They're not training our military to fight wars in foreign countries. They're training them in urban guerrilla warfare to fight Americans right here. Oh, right. The, you know, they'll, eventually they'll go to door to door. You know, Hitler did this. See, what he did, he took troops from uh, other parts of uh, Austria, and he moved them into other countries where they had held no allegiance. Sure. And uh, uh, that's what is going on right now. You're living in 1938 Nazi Germany. Yes. With Bill Clinton at him. You know what really scares me is going into Y2K with Bill Clinton or Al Gore. You know, we, we, <laughs> we need a real leader in there, and I think the only way we're going to get it is to restore the Constitution legally and lawfully. Let me tell you something. There is a provision in the Constitution to do this. You you heard Formal you government, uh, did you hear against the people. did you hear what Clayton Douglas said last night? What's that? He told you the truth. Exactly. If you were to take Bill Clinton out of the presidency right now, impeach him. However, you did it. It wouldn't make any difference. No. Nothing would change. No. If you were to put a Republican in there tomorrow, wouldn't make any difference. Nothing would change. Yeah. Nothing will still be going in the same direction down the path toward world government and the destruction of this country and our freedom. We don't have any sovereignty when you hear the so-called leaders, read traitors in Washington, D.C., telling us that we are now party to a world court, a world criminal court. Sure, they could drag you into that court and convict you and you have no rights. And... Well, I'm sure they already got their eye on me. Oh, well, I'm... I don't have any doubts about that, but I'm not going in their court unless I'm in a coffin. They can find they can find my dead body guilty if they can do that. Right, they'll they'll round up people that they feel don't go along with the order, and uh, we've already been told that by Louis Free. If you don't go along with the new world order or the new order, which he called it, you're considered a domestic terrorist. That's exactly right. You've already been branded. You've already been branded as domestic terrorist. Yeah, for telling the truth. Right. <laughs> Most dangerous radio host in America because I tell the truth. Yeah, you know I heard that uh, once, and you know and I, I just laughed. I had to laugh. I said, now, how can anybody that night after night, year after year, sits there and tells you the truth, and it comes true right before your eyes, but you still don't believe it, and then you call it dangerous? I don't. 
see how anybody can actually see that. So you're not using a brain. They, you know, they're going off and... Oh, yes, they are. You see, they, they know what I know. The truth is the most dangerous weapon you can use against a liar. Sure, then you have to feed them disinformation. That's all you're seeing is disinformation. Socialism is nothing but a string of lies. It cannot stand in the light of truth. Neither can communism. So they must lie to people and manipulate them and by slow degrees strip them of their rights and push them into the new order. Because if anybody could ever see the truth about what is coming, there would be nothing but bodies swinging from ropes, from lamp poles, all across Washington, D.C. I think you're right. I think if the people were to know right now how they've been sold out, they would do exactly that. Yes, they would. Yeah. I'm afraid that they would. Yeah. You know, I saw a foreign broadcast today on a presidential palace that was uh, under siege. Did you see that? No. I think it was in Central America. And I was just thinking to myself, when, uh, if I could, if... Uh, in the, Central America? Yeah. I, I think you might be talking about somewhere in the Far East, because that's where those things are happening uh -huh. right now. The yeah. economies have, have plunged to such depths that the people are, in some places... In, in revolt. Oh, right. In Indonesia, they had the riots. Yeah. yeah you know, they're still rioting in, in Indonesia and Malaysia. Right. And, uh, it it kind of looked, uh, I just got it, it was one of those. Uh, this collapse has not, has not manifested its, 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 its terror yet. Yeah. I kind of always held in my mind, I kind of hoped that in the back of my mind that when the American people had enough, they'd do something about it. But apparently I don't see that happening. Americans, by their very nature, won't have enough until you take their car away from them, their TV away from them, and they sit down to eat dinner some night, and there's nothing on the table. Well, you know, they might, that just might happen with Y2K because they're embedded chips and vehicles, your TV set, your VCR, uh, uh, satellites. They may not even be able to uplink the signal because of embedded chips and systems. Well, it's, so, it's, not, it's not any of that that is the danger. It's people's reaction to it. That well, is the danger. I don't, I don't think... See, what do you gonna think is going to happen in the inner cities when the grocery supermarkets run out of food and there's no trucks coming in? Right. What do you think is going to happen? Well, do you yeah. think the L.A. riots were bad? You ain't seen nothing yet, buddy. Yeah. And it won't be because of Y2K. It'll be because of the stupidity of the people. Oh, sure. You take away their food, and they'll do almost anything to get to feel safe or get their food back. Especially when they can do it in the middle of a mob where they think that nobody knows who the hell they are. Right. They'll murder you right. for a can of peas. For, yeah, exactly. For a loaf of bread or a can of peas. Yeah, or a quarter even. Right. Now, I was near L.A. at the time of the riots, and I remember that. And anyone who gets in the face of a mob ends up on the ground, kicked in the head, thrown in, you know, and almost shot. Yeah. Well, you know, a lot of people out there shaking their heads saying, Bill Cooper's crazy. Here he is. Get out of this stuff. It, I'll tell you how I know this. It's not because God whispers in my ear or I have any kind of crystal balls, because I've studied history, and this scenario has repeated itself throughout the history of the world, and I just read the accounts of what happened in these cities when it happened. Oh, yeah, exactly. And you know what? It, it kind of, it, you look at it, there is a pattern of uh, certain things that have happened, just like uh, the Oklahoma City bombing happened in uh, the 19th. Now you're getting into uh, Art Bell territory. I don't believe in in uh, in this pattern of dates unless there is a particular reason why a group of people would want something to happen on a certain date because maybe that date has a particular meaning in their religion or their esoteric beliefs or or something like that. Right. Well, certain dates mean certain things to certain people. Yeah. You know, just like uh, in the Bible, certain dates are are period time periods are mentioned. Yeah. You know, and I believe that we're in a certain time period, exactly. Um, well, if you compare uh, throughout history, like you said, the pattern of this is you can look and see how it, uh, you know, uh, economies were just countries were destroyed and invaded, taken over, and uh, and this is just a, another example of it, you know, of, of this world government and where it's headed. Well, it's certainly headed. <laughs> I'll tell you that. It's, it's stampeding. Well, um, I don't, I, like you said, you don't think we can stop it, but I don't think I don't think we have any choice but to try. No, I don't believe for one minute we're going to stop it. I believe that we're rushing toward a confrontation between armed groups 
for the future of the world. Uh -huh. And I think that that's, I think there's going to be civil war in this country. Yeah. I believe it. I think there will. It's already started on this mountaintop. I've, I've already told them. Well, you were talking earlier about how they, they have divided yeah, they, religions and races. Yeah. And if you divide, you can conquer. And that's exactly what they're getting at each other's throats. They want everybody at each other's throats. So when they walk in, they, you know, they, uh, you're told this person is against you and you are against them. And you have hatred towards someone that you should be your brother. But uh, instead of seeing that and seeing that uh, you're going to be taken over by a cultistic, socialistic government, they don't see that. They don't understand that. They don't want to believe it. How can they understand it when they don't even understand how their city works, much less their county, and oh, no. forget the state and Washington, D.C.? That's why when these, when, these, when these idiots with microphones stick a microphone in somebody, some sheeple's face, and ask them what they think the Congress ought to do about such and such and so and so. Uh, you know what the person ought to say? He ought to be honest and say, I don't know what you're talking about, and I'm not going to make a fool out of myself on television. Right. But you know what he does? He says, well, I think they ought to do this and this and this, and he hasn't got the slightest idea what he's talking it about. It doesn't. No, it doesn't. It doesn't <laughs> understand the Constitution. He's never read it. You know, you'd be surprised how many police officers. Now, I was a police officer myself back in the early 70s, uh -huh. and until I woke up to what was going on, and... Um, federal officer, by the way, and uh, I could see what was going on. You know, I said, well, I either ought to get out of this and get on the other side or I'm going to end up dead. Well, that's right. And it was I was in a dangerous neighborhood in New Orleans, and uh, you know, between the low housing projects and high crime, and uh, it wasn't safe. And if that's not safe, then, you know, then, imagine now, you know, uh -huh. for, for what's coming, mm -hmm. you know, what we're facing. Yeah. We certainly are. We're also in exciting times. I mean, yep. the, yep. you know, every person on this earth has a chance to do something that can really affect the future of the entire human race. Exactly. I mean, I'm trying my best to have my effect, and right. uh, uh, some other people are. Most people sit on the couch and wait for somebody else to do it for them. Yeah, it's like, you know, somebody else will do it, you know, but it's not going to get done that way. It's going to get done when you decide you've had enough and you're going to do something about it. Well, you, you want to know the truth? It Throughout is. the history of the world, everything that's ever been done has been done by less than 3.5% of any population. Oh, sure. And sometimes as little as one man or woman. Oh, sure. The Revolutionary War is a good example of that. Uh, I think it was less than, what, 3 4% of the population wrote and uh, defeated the British? It was about 3%. Yeah. 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 Oh. It was a small group. Three percent of the entire population of the colonies created this nation and uh, fought the uh, Revolutionary War, and the rest of them were either still on the side of King George or just flat didn't give it in. Well, sure. Many of them died and lost everything they owned mm -hmm. just, to, just to keep that principle of freedom. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. You know, they sacrificed, their family sacrificed, but see, people aren't willing to sacrifice anymore. You know, they want somebody else to do it for them. You know, I don't, I'm not going to do anything. I'll let the other guy worry about it. Well, their idea of sacrifice is baking a cake and taking it down to the homeless center. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah right. I sacrificed a box of cake mix in two hours of my time. That's, you know, I've done my job, done my duty. Yeah, they think they, and they, and they feel good. They walk away thinking, well, gee, I've really done something. Yeah. Right, you know, mm -hmm. they haven't done anything. I've asked, you know, the, the well, I don't know. If I was a homeless person and, and it was a good cake, I would have thought they did something. But it really isn't what they should be doing. You know what I'm talking about? No, if they really want to do something, they'd go down there and help them get a job or uh, help them. Uh, no, no, no. If they really wanted to do something, they'd leave those poor people alone until they ask for help. Most of them don't want any help. That's true. And, and that's, I'm not, this is not a joke. I'm not trying to make a joke, and I'm not telling you a big fat lie here. It's the uh. truth. Most homeless people are homeless because they want to be, and they don't want anybody messing with them. Right. They want to lay on somebody else's leg. I mean, let's face it. No, they don't even want to lay on somebody else's leg. They don't want anybody messing with them. They are right. in the situation that they want to be in. Sure. Sure. They're in their own little world, and they don't want to be disturbed. That's exactly right. And um, some, of them, some of them do need help. Well, yeah. And uh, some of them go and ask for help, and they get it. 
If they don't them. want to help themselves, it doesn't matter what you do, you cannot help them. That's right. They're going to want it, want it themselves. Yeah. And like you said, a lot of them don't want help. You know, they don't want to go out. They don't want to work. That's right. You know, and they don't want to uh, support their community or their country. They just don't care. I talk to people. You know, I try to explain to them what's going on. You know, what kind of answers I get? Oh, I don't want to talk about that. Uh, I don't like to talk about that. Uh, and then they get to that glazed over look in their eyes. Yeah. You know, like, uh, well, this guy's like, uh, oh, this can't be right. I mean, he must be delusional. You know, and then, and then you try to show well, them. Oh, and they, they know better than that. The reason they don't want to talk about it is because, you know, they know you're telling the truth. They don't want to be responsible to have to admit that it's true because then they have to do something about it. Because Well, it's more than that. They don't want any part of it. They don't want to be responsible. They want you to leave them alone. They're like the homeless people. Leave me alone. Yeah. Leave me alone. I'm having too much fun. I'm happy. You know, I got a job. I got a six-pack of Budweiser. And and Judy's coming over tonight. You leave me alone. Yeah, I don't need anything. I don't want to hear all that. Listen, I got to let you go. You've been on here a long, long time. But thanks, Bill. I I haven't talked to you in about five years because I haven't had a phone that that, uh, was worth... uh, but uh, mm-hmm. tonight I thought I'd give you a call and, uh, you know, be, just be grateful that you're back on the air and uh, we get the truth again. Thank you. And that was a good guest you had last night. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And Thank you. Good night. 520 is the number. 520 I can't say that fast, clearly. Uh-oh. Good evening. You're on the air. Hey, good afternoon, Bill. Good afternoon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Where are you at? Uh, you, you, must, you, must be in, you must be in Hawaii. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hey, uh, you asked about what we can do. In Ohio, we have some people that are uh, giving law seminars. And uh, maybe some of them are very active and they're filing lawsuits. And, of course, some of them are getting in trouble, too. But at least they're willing to share some of their information with the, the people that attend. And I thought maybe if... However, they still like the election. And then, so the average guy who goes there who's not an activist can't keep up with it. The average guy who goes there is not learning, is not looking to learn about law. He's looking for somebody to give him two or three sheets of paper that he can fill out according to the instructions during the seminar, sign his name to, and, and, uh, and, and get out of a lot of stuff. It's, it's, not, on, it's not honesty they're engaged in, nor is it patriotism. Is that kind of patriotism? I said it's not patriotism. What is it? No. I'm talking about for most of the people who go there to hear yeah. these seminars. They're looking for a magic bullet to solve their problems. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, I know. Everybody's looking for that magic bullet. Uh... There isn't any. Mm-hmm. There isn't any. doesn't exist. Well, I think people... All right, some of your callers call and say it's education. But then everybody's spending all their time educating and and you get into these arguments. One guy's got to tell you, oh, that he's smarter than you. So the only thing I can think of is is for these activists and lawyers, not lawyer types, or another law. You know what you do? You stop going to seminars and you get your own nose in the law books and learn it like I did. Okay, that's right. And and, to an average guy... Oh, don't give me that average guy. Bill Clinton's an average guy, and he's in the White House. Yeah, I know. Don't give me that ad- average guy. I'm not good enough, or I can't do this, or, or I'm not smart enough, or I don't know how to do the research like you do. And That's baloney. My brain isn't any different than yours or anybody else's. Some people don't have a good gift of words, though. You know why they don't? Because they haven't put any effort into it. It takes a lot. Oh, my gosh. Heaven forbid that we should have to work to accomplish anything. Hey, well, you've got to do some work. I agree. And and study these law books. But if you don't, you're not going to learn anything in any seminar because it all depends upon what you know, not what somebody tells you. And there's only one way to know it, and that is to get in there and study it. Dig it out. But we Learn don't have it. that much time, Bill. So then now what do you Oh, well, then let's give up. There's not enough time. Let's just forget uh, all I, of it. Why are we even talking about it if there's not enough time? Well, I agree. I thought maybe there would be a magic bullet. So you're saying there is not. 
Of course not. There never has been throughout the history of the world. Can you cite me any, any instance throughout the history of any nation on this earth that anybody ever had a magic bullet besides the Lone Ranger? <laughs> the Arizona Ranger. <laughs> you know, it's like the song, you know, Arizona Ranger. I haven't heard it. Oh, hey, that's the best song there is by Marty Robbins. Yeah, I've never heard it. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Hey, here's a, here's, okay, switch, uh, shift gears a little here. The American <laughs> Revolution, you're talking a lot about that. Now, I've written to John Daniels, and it seems to me that a lot of these officers in Washington's army were all uh, basically French Masonic, fighting the British, you know, Masonic people, and they had enough uh, connections to undermine Cornwallis and the British. What are you saying? Most of the founding fathers were Freemasons. Benjamin Franklin was the master of the of the lodge in Philadelphia. Right. He was also the master of the, of the lodge of nine muses in France. Okay. George Washington was the master of lodge. He created the Knights of the Golden Circle, which was made up of the of the officers that served with him during the Revolution. Out of the Knights of the Golden Circle, which was also uh, known uh, by another name, it came the Ku Klux Klan. And a, lot, and a lot of other things. Okay. They did not found this nation to set men free. They founded this nation to destroy the kings and queens so that ultimately they could have one world government. That wow. has always been the goal of the esoteric societies behind what they call the veil. Okay. In the process, they set men free because that's the only way that they could show the world that men could be free and cause them to revolt against the monarchies and topple them from the thrones. Knowing full well that free men would not stay free, but would give up their freedom at some point in the future in exchange for security. Right, I understand. What do you mean right? You never heard, you never understood this before. <laughs> yes, I did. I hear a lot of this stuff. I listen to it. I love this stuff. Hey, but here's the thing. Uh, hey, uh, you see, we all, when we grow up, and even in our mid-40s, we still think that George Washington, we, we think of him as benevolent Mason. And they did a good thing, maybe. The French Masons, you know. They did. They set you free. They're not, in, they're not imprisoning you again. You are. Okay. All right. We are. They gave us freedom. All if right. we were capable of handling it and keeping it, this would be the New World Order. But we lost it somewhere. Yes. A long time ago. We didn't lose it. We gave it away. Civil War time ago. Huh? No. Every day since this nation was created, we have been giving our freedoms away. Bit by bit, piece by piece. Little by little, surely and surely. All right. Here, here's another. Nobody outside this country did it to us. We did it to ourselves. Okay. Oh, you know how Clinton, he, uh, he used a narrow definition of uh, uh, the sexual definition of sex in the, defined on, by Judge Wright in the Paula Jones, right? You know, in other words, his tactic was, well, I'm not guilty of something because it's defined by this narrow reasoning. If that's the way it's defined in the law, how can he be guilty of breaking the law if he didn't do it? Well, that's just the way he interpreted it. Well, I'm, I'm not arguing that, yeah. but that's his argument. His argument is if the law defines it this way, and I didn't do it that way, I'm not guilty of a crime. I didn't do it. Okay, but, that, but he was just always referring to what Paula Jones, hey, he was in the grand jury, and therefore, hey, we got different definitions. It isn't just what Jones no, no. Right. the law doesn't work that way. You go by the definition in the law. It doesn't matter what your definition is or my definition is. It matters what the definition in the law is. Well, maybe the, the judge right in the Paula Jones didn't uh, define it correctly. She, she, she used a narrow definition to give uh, Bill Clinton a, a way out. And that may strategy is what I think the liberals and the New World Order people are doing. They, they, use, they play this, you know, rabbinic. All lawyers play it, and it has nothing to do with rabbinic. It's called cunning. Well, you know, you studied the Talmud and you know how... It has nothing to do with the Talmud. You're talking about law. Yeah, I 
Oh, come on, man. How do you go from Clinton going by a judge's definition to say he didn't commit an act, which is what all lawyers do in every court in this thing, every day, to rabbinic Talmudism? How in the world did you make that leap? I'm just using them as an expert example. Them who? To use words. Uh. Change the laws of God? Yes. No, nobody. You know what Jesus said in what Matthew 15, you've taken the laws of God and making them to no effect by the tradition of your elders. And so the tradition of the elders eventually became the Mishnah and then the Talmud. And so, you know, I, you read it in the, uh, the expose. I, you know, I'm not condemning them because they're experts in... Not condemning uh, who? The, the original rabbinic writers of uh, the Mishnah. And the well, that doesn't have anything to do with you. That's their religion. I know, but I'm just saying that's what Bill Clinton is using and the liars. And I'm just saying they, they, they use that again. Wait, wait a minute. Let's go back again. He's not using that. Bill Clinton isn't Jewish. I doubt if he's ever even heard of it. Oh, I think he's been coached on it. By who? Uh, How about George Bush? He's not Jewish. I Well, yeah. How about Al Gore? He's not Jewish. Hey, here, here's one thing I've heard. How about Billy Carter? He's not Jewish. Not Billy Carter and not Jimmy. Jimmy, Jimmy. Billy Carter, I said. Oh, oh, oh. Jimmy's next. How about uh, how, how about Ronald Reagan? He's not Jewish. Well, here, here's the trick, though, uh, Bill. When they become 33rd degree Masons, theoretically, they go into a like a quasi. I've studied the Freemasons for over 26 years, and that is not true. Well, that is not true. You think George Bush, Ronald Reagan have the little beanie on their head, and uh, what little beanie? What are you talking about? Well, you know, you've seen them when they and George Bush conducted, uh, you know, Jewish. Let me tell you something. When I go to a Jewish friend's home to eat. I put on one of those out of the respect for the family while I have dinner with them. All right. Does it make me Jewish? I don't believe their religion. It's their religion. But I respect them because they're my friends. And when they come to my house at Christmas time, they respect my traditions. Wait, wait a minute. Yeah. Don't tell me what I know. You tell me what you know. Okay? Well, I, I just see these things by observation. So you see George Bush kissing the wailing wall with his beanie on. Or you almost kiss, you know, I've, I, never, I've never seen George Bush kiss the wailing wall with a yarmulke on. Oh, there's a picture of it. It's been in magazines in New York. Uh, and, you know, see, one good thing about the Eastern newspapers is, you know, New York and Cleveland is that they have pictures of you know, people, um, He's the head of our country. How do you know that he wasn't doing that just to out of respect for 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 the Israelis? Well, that's true too. But I mean, when yeah. foreign leaders come to our country, they participate in our ceremonies. Does that make them Americans or right Christians? Up. No, I agree. But look, George Bush did conduct uh, Hanukkah services in the White House. How do you know that? Well, there's pictures of it in the Jewish magazine, the Sentinel. Let me tell you something. George Bush never conducted Hanukkah services in the White House. The White House honors all religious holidays because it is an institution and a building that belongs to all American people. Well, I think... I guarantee you, he observes Christmas in the White House. You ever seen a picture of a rabbi in a Christian church at Christmas? No. I have. Oh, okay. So they go there. Okay, I see what you're, I see where you're going with. <laughs> All right. Does that mean that they're Christians and, and they're, they're, no, they're, no, they're, they're, they're plotting against Jewry? No, 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 no. Of course not. Well, then how could you make all these leaps? George Bush is not Jewish. Well, there might be something because the one website, 
by the Catholics says that Masonry was originally founded by King Herod and his followers. No, it wasn't. Masonry came out of ancient Babylon, long, long, came out of, of uh, ancient Assyria, Mesopotamia, Babylon, long before Israel ever existed and the Jews were still running around chasing sheep through the of desert. Course it wasn't known as Masonry then, but think about it. Building King Herod think about it. I've studied it for 26 years. I have been teaching people about Freemasonry and the esoteric, hidden fraternal orders, the Illuminati, if you will, all of these secret societies, for years. Right. I'm the only one who has ever publicly revealed their secrets, their real secrets, to the whole world on the radio. All right, but we, you, you know that King Herod built a magnificent temple, so he used lots of masons and carpenters, right? And therefore, Anybody in those days who built anything used masons, but they were not Freemasons. Do you understand? Oh, yeah. But they use the guild. You know, think about it. They want to... They wanna... I'm not going to think about it. I'm going to tell you right now that Freemasons did not come out of labor guilds. Freemasonry is nothing more or less than the modern extension of the ancient mystery schools. They would like for you to believe that they came out of the unionized Builders' guilds in the medieval age. Cited. You said that you know what you just said. I'm saying, did you read it in the Bible? How do you know it? You said you made a statement. You All said, right. I know this. You said, we know this. Well, we are. We I don't know who we is, because I don't know that. It's certainly not in the Bible. <laughs> All right. If you read the Bible verses in the Gospels, indicate that Jesus was arrested by the temple guards and taken to Caiaphas' house. And then, depending on which gospel you read, then he's transferred, probably, it doesn't say back to the temple, but you read a lot of Jewish encyclopedias and they suggest that possibly he was. Are you kidding me? No, the Jews kidding. never suggest anything like that. They deny that he ever existed. Oh, uh, wait, wait a minute. The Talmud itself says, Yeshu was hanged on the eve of the Passover. Sanhedrin. And you know, I, I, you know, people want to look at this. I have read all of that, and it is not in any reference to any person that they believe was Jesus, the Christian Jesus. Well, they used code words because they didn't want to use them. Oh, come on! As if you could understand code words if they did use them. Well, a lot of a lot of the code words they use are very similar to the life of Jesus. Like what code code words? Well, they use Salem. Balaam is Satan. Balaam is Baal, Bel, Satan, Lucifer. But then they refer to him as, you know, dying when he was... Baal was the golden calf. Moses came down from the mountain and found that they were worshipping the golden calf. Remember? Right. And they called the golden calf Baal. Now, where, where do you get this? They called the golden calf Baal. <laughs> now, you know, it doesn't say that in the King James Bible. Or any other Bible. No, it doesn't. They are interpretations. You have to go to the original Greek and Hebrew. All right. They also say in the in the Bible that we're going to reach the end of the world, doesn't it? Right. And that's not what it says in the ancient Greek and Hebrew. It says the end of the age. The age, okay. See, I'm really interested in your golden calf thing. That, that really is interesting. You're saying in the original uh, Hebrew, which I have, I have people that can translate. Baal was the golden calf. That's right. B-A-A-L. Okay. Bill, good talking to you. I'll let you go. Okay. Thanks a lot. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> five two zero three 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 four five seven eight. Don't you just live for conversations like that? Ah, <laughs> uh, good evening. You're on the air. Hey, Bill. It's Vince from Ohio. How you doing? Hi, Vince. Hey. Doing good. I got your email, by the way. Oh, did you? That's yeah. great. Yeah, it's good to hear you. You're coming in really well, uh, well over here. So, when's your movie going to be on HBO?
That's weird. Last time I checked, you can't copyright title. Yeah. Well, I don't know if it was copyright, but I, there was, I know there was another, uh, maybe I explained that the wrong way, there was another movie done in 1988 called Counterforce, and they yeah. had a problem with that, yeah. uh, with that film company. Okay. Uh, but uh, that's what I heard. So how's, how's things going out there? Oh, going fine. Just tired. I'm just tired today for some reason. There's no reason for it. I'm just tired. I don't know why. Yeah. I, I know I stayed up late. That could be it. I stayed up late last night to listen to uh, to uh, Stan Deo on Art Bell to see what he was going to say. And uh, I'm going to probably stay up tonight and listen to uh, uh, <laughs> John David Morton um, because I want to yeah I want to see how. You know how he has evolved. Let me put it that. I want to see how the son of Satan has evolved over the years. <laughs> oh, see, I, I'm not familiar with him. Is he a uh, uh, he's a Satanist? Then I take it. He's a con man, is what he is. He's, he's well, just listen to Art Bell tonight. You'll hear him. Yeah, you know what Art Bell? When I when I listen to his show, it always it, it gives me the same feeling when I was a little kid, and we used to watch uh, uh, Walt Disney uh, TV show on like on Sunday nights or something. Uh huh. Spin and Marty used to make me puke. What's that? Spin and Marty. Okay. If you watched Walt Disney Fantasyland on Sunday night, you saw Spin and Marty, I'm sure. No, no, I don't, I don't, I don't remember him. The parentless children who lived on the ranch. Oh. Boys. They lived on a boys' ranch. No, well, I never, never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind. Go, go ahead. <laughs> you saw Davy Crockett. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just checking. <laughs> but if, uh, the one the one problem I see today is uh, what I want, what I called in for was uh, uh, is that a lot of people are just basically uh, lazy. They just don't want to go out and talk to other people. And a lot of the people that are in the uh, uh, so-called patriot movement, you know, they have no problem. Uh, as I've said many times, and you and I have talked about it many times, is they have no problem going to the bars and spending. Uh, you know, twenty, thirty, forty dollars drinking a night, but uh, they go to a gun show. And if you have some sort of uh, patriotic uh, type organization asking for a five dollar donation, and you, you know, out of the five dollar donation, you still get like six newsletters a year, and it helps keep the organization going to fight uh, bad gun legislation or so forth. You just can't. Uh, these, these people don't want to part with their money. It's amazing that they want to sit and complain. Yeah, yeah. The the socialists give. Everything that they've got, millions and millions of dollars to their causes, billions even. Um, uh, Ted Turner or, just gave a billion dollars to the United Nations. Sure. You, uh, people, you know, if, if you ask for donations, you can't get them from so-called patriots. And when you offer them good products, they won't buy those either. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. A lot of these they do not support their own causes, never have, and because of that, they're losing the battle. Exactly. It takes money to fight a war. You know why? Because they're secret socialists and they can't admit it to themselves. They want it for free. Yeah. That's socialism and communism, where you where you get it for free. Oh, exactly. Exactly. You know, it's the one the one thing that I did see uh, being involved in, in the movie business is that uh, you know the movie business. Although you do have the Ted Turners out there, you have the big you know Oliver Stone, you have big movie producers out there that would want to stop dead in its tracks any type of patriotic uh, movie that or, or television show that would uh, uh, wake the people up or, or get patriotism, you know, in their gut, like if, if they saw a movie like Sergeant York or something, or a lot of the older movies from the 40s. Yeah, you don't see any of that coming out of Hollywood today. Mm -hmm. Closest that, thing to it was Braveheart, which I was so happy to see. Yeah, that, that was a big surprise. That was a big, I would have loved to see that in a modern setting, but that would have that would have been something they would have thought. Yeah. They probably figure, well, the people were too stupid uh, to, to make the connection. <laughs> <laughs> and they're right. Most people watched it because they're Mel Gibson fans, or the, or the women like to see Mel Gibson. Many people totally missed the whole point of that movie. Uh -huh. uh, but but what I'm saying is is that the one problem a lot of people. 
people complain about they don't like the movies at the uh, movie theaters, they don't like what's on on the uh, cable. Well, you know, there's a lot of the independent film industry is growing by leaps and bounds. It is unbelievable. You can produce a movie for $50,000 <coughs> or less and put it on 35 millimeter film and get it edited just as well as any big budget movie because of the fact that, number one, vanity is out there and you can get actors to work for free. If they know they can get a credit, they will work for free, and there's plenty of them out there. Also, a lot of people that are in the, uh, the support services, a lot of them don't work all the time and they would work for credit or they would work for uh, you know, payment later if the film sells or gets distri uh, distributed. And you know, a lot of people can get involved in that process and it's not that hard because you can call your local uh, your state film commission, you can call your local film. Now, just about every, every major city or every major city in the country has a film commission now. And, uh, and a lot of it is because of these, lot of these independent film companies that are popping up all over. And if people say they're patriots and they would like to see something like that, I would suggest they get on the Internet or get on the telephone and start calling and contacting these different film people. And, uh, and they can get involved in it. It doesn't take a big, large amount of money. Uh, our film group is working to, uh, to do a movie. We just did a movie called The Cutoff down in, uh, at Screen Gem Studios down in North Carolina. Uh, Frank Capra Jr. even made a cameo in the, uh, in the movie. Now, this movie's an action movie. It doesn't really have anything uh, to do with uh, patriotism or anything like that. However, those type of movies can be produced at, you know, for a low, bu you know, a low budget, and, uh, and, and I feel that that's one of the few ways uh, that we're going to be able to educate people because it's a shame that people want to be entertained. But, you know, if, if people don't get off their rears, and if, if they could just set a goal to educate two people a month, whether they're relatives and those are the hardest to educate on this, uh, on these subjects, because there's always a prejudice involved because, you know, somebody that's a mechanic in the family tries to tell them who they're educated and so forth at some college, you know, about what's going on in the world. A lot of people, they don't like, they don't like to hear that, but uh, just if, if uh, a lot of the relatives don't like to hear that because they always have these pre, pre, uh, predetermined uh, uh, ideas of how the relative is, and usually it's not favorable. But uh, if, if, they, if people could just decide that, hey, I'm going to go out and educate at least two people a month. I'm going to give them a, a magazine. I'm going to give them a Veritas. I'm going to give them a, a New American at least or something, or I'm going to buy them a cheap shortwave radio, or I'm going to tape something from shortwave radio and, and stick it in their car stereo uh, so they could listen to it. If people would just do that, that would make such a big improvement because there are so many problems in this country right now that people are fishing around. Again, they know there's something wrong, but they don't know what it is. And, and your show is, I would say, is probably the best show on sh anywhere that, that educates and is also entertaining, but, but uh, there's no BS involved. And, and I would, uh, you know, I would think that your listeners and, and everyone should should do that. Maybe take one of your shows, give it away, and start working on it right away because there's not much time left. Hmm. Well, you know, I think um, I don't think anybody's going to call anybody and tell them they want these kinds of movies um, because I I happen to know a little trick. If the uh, if all these people really cared about what Hollywood was producing, they'd buy the stock of the corporations that make the movies and they'd make them make the movies that they want. Mm -hmm. But they won't do that because that costs money. Exactly. Oh, heaven forbid we should spend a nickel on our cause. <laughs> oh. hey, heaven, right. heaven forbid. Yep. You're, you're 100% right. You know, but they Besides, I read the book. We all know how it comes out in the end. I hear that a lot. What's that? Oh, yeah. I, I read the book. I know how it comes out in the end. We win in the end, so we don't have to do anything. Yeah. <laughs> God helps those who help themselves. Well, didn't Ben Franklin say that? No. <laughs> I don't think that. That's not in the Bible, though, is it? <laughs> I thought I heard that Ben Franklin... Everybody says it's, you know, it's in the Bible. They read it in the Bible that uh, they know how it comes out in the end and they're going to win. They don't understand. They just don't understand. The people that are going to be there in the end are going to be the people that helped fight and win the battles, and the rest of them ain't going to be there. That's true. If it's all true. Yes, 
And, and I have to say that so that I'm not pushing my what I believe on anybody else. Well, I'll be keeping in touch. I'll let somebody else uh, get on board. You guys are doing a real good job. And uh, say hello to the family for me. Thank you, Vince. Yeah, you take it easy, Bill. All right. Thanks for calling. Sure. Bye-bye. 520-333-4578 is the number. And uh, it's your turn. Hello, it's your turn. Uh, good evening, Bill. This is Mike from LaBelle. Hi, Mike. Uh, I, I've got a, uh, an FM100 and, and a, a 20 watt uh, amplifier. And uh, I'm kind of glad that I didn't quite get around to buying a microphone until I started started studying the schematic on it. And I found out that it, it needed uh, one of these electric type mics. Is there anyone there that, that knows like a particular brand? Whatever Why does it need an electric type mic? If no, you have a okay. if you have a mixing board, you can use any kind of mic you want. I'm using a ribbon microphone, a BX44 that was made in the 1920s. Well, I, I don't have a, a board. I can't afford that yet. Can it go directly into the transmitter? Yeah, okay. there's an input in the front yeah. that uh-huh. says for microphone. Yeah. But the thing is, is that it requires a, a well on the inside of the schematic, it, it says that it feeds the microphone a five plus voltage and I found out through a friend of mine he's an older gentleman that uh, uh, I would, if I would have plugged in any kind of mic it would have either hurt the unit or hurt the microphone but I was just wondering if, if anyone call, out there call Ramsey call Ramsey call Ramsey they made it okay I'll let you go they ought to be able to tell you exactly thank you See, we're using a mixing board so that's not a problem for us yeah and this idea about putting up a uh, they just got to do it. Yeah. Because it, they, you know, the, the New World Order is basically saying that we own these people. And so far, God hasn't told me that they own them yet. I'll let you go. Okay. Thanks for calling. 520-3-3. Why did I do that? <laughs> just turned the mic off. I don't even, I don't even, didn't even know what I was doing. Good evening. You're on the air. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Let me, let me turn the radio down here. Okay. Please. Uh, Mr. Bill. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whoops. Oh my gosh. Turn it off. Turn, turn it off. You can hear through the phone. <laughs> Cleveland Heights. We're a suburb of Cleveland. Uh huh. I used to live in East Cleveland. Yeah. And that's also a suburb of Cleveland. It's about four minutes down the road. Okay. And uh, we moved here in Cleveland Heights in 1960. I've been living here in the same house for 38 years. And. Uh, Anyway, we have a park in East Cleveland called Rockefeller Park. Uh-huh. And uh, it was named Rockefeller Park after John D. Rockefeller. I would never have guessed in a million years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they, they subsequently uh, renamed it Forest Hills Park. I don't know why, but they did. Okay. And we used to play in Rockefeller Park. My dad used to take my brother and I to Rockefeller Park and, and play and have cookouts. We had a wonderful time. You might say that we that we played in the backyard of John D. Rockefeller, who made most of his money, as I understand it, in kerosene. And there was a uh, a pond in Rockefeller Park, mm-hmm. a beautiful pond, a circular pond. And he used to fill up his bottles full of that pond. And yeah, go ahead. <laughs> But anyway, uh, it was a small pond, and the, uh, in the winter, it would freeze over, and everyone around here, uh, uh, well, you know, some folks would ice skate on the pond. Yeah. But in the summer, uh, there were beautiful swans in the, in the pond. Okay. Oh, several dozen beautiful swans. And as the years went by, the neighborhood changed. And uh, an element moved into the neighborhood that didn't have the respect, I don't believe, um, that they should have for the beauty of the park and the beauty of the, the pond and the beauty of the swans. And the swans began to be, to be killed. Uh, young people, uh, you know, teenagers, mm-hmm. uh, began to kill the swans. And they killed all the swans. They all died brutally. They were stoned, they were shot, they were stabbed, they were dismembered, and they're gone. And now the pond is is no longer uh, a pond. It's been filled in with dirt, and when you drive by there today, it's it's no longer what it used to be. Yeah. That's too bad, isn't it? 
Yeah, it's happened all over the country. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is to that. I remember in Hawaii, uh, there was a section called Kaholo. Uh -huh. And this was the uh, poor section. Uh, all different races and people lived down there, but they were all poor. Uh -huh. And so uh, they decided to do something for these people. They built them a brand new condominium building. And I don't remember how they selected who was going to move into this condominium building. Uh -huh. But it was beautiful. I mean, beautiful. Beautiful. Building with beautiful apartments in it and, and everything. And they gave it to these people. Uh -huh. And they moved in, and two weeks later, it was nothing but junk. The pipes were torn out of the wall and sold for scrap metal mm -hmm. contents. And, and there was urine in all the hallways and up and down the stairs and yeah. feces in the corners and, and the holes in the wall and windows broken out and... and uh, and, uh, and everything like that. I went, you know, I lived in this house, uh, Bill, for 38 years. Mm -hmm. And a few weeks ago, early Saturday morning, I don't know why, I stay up all night and I listen to the hour of the time. And Art Bell, and old Glenn Miller Records. Uh huh. Well, yeah. we, we got a lot of those. <laughs> <laughs> and it just hit me. Uh, I got a, 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 a urge to see my old house that we left 38 years ago. So uh, I, down Cleveland. I hope you didn't have the same experience I had when I did that. Well, I was very disappointed. I was overcome with such a feeling of sadness I couldn't believe it. And I just tears were streaming down my face. Yeah. There was an oak tree in front of our house, a beautiful oak tree, and it was gone. And the house mm -hmm. had been covered over with aluminum siding. Mm -hmm. uh, the garage had been refurbished. It didn't look anything like it used to be. And it was very upsetting. It was too bad. And I felt very, very uneasy in that neighborhood because of, uh, East Cleveland has the highest crime rate in the state of Ohio, uh -huh. and it's four minutes from my house. It's not always a good idea to go back. Well, no, I suppose not. It, it didn't. But it anyway, didn't do me any good. Did me a lot of harm. As <laughs> That's the good old days, Bill. Yeah, it was, and I wish, I wish all these people who are lost within themselves and, and uh, are, are responsible for a lot of what's happening today uh, could have uh, somehow lived through a part of that to, to see what a wonderful place this country was. Uh, because it was absolutely the most wonderful place upon the face of this earth. Um, and it can still be again. can still be again, yeah. Maybe. Up to us, I guess. <laughs> it is up to us. Nobody else is going to do it for us. <laughs> you know, people okay, live. Okay, sir. Well, thanks a lot. Thanks, thanks for calling. Thank you. Bye. 520 333 4578. While we're waiting for a call, let's, uh, let's take a little break here. And wow, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> Good evening. You're on the air. Hi, Bill Doyle. It's Darlene from Eager. Hi, Darlene. Hi. How are you? Hi. Well, you've hit me right between the eyes with it again. Really? <laughs> How do we do that? I, I am a relatively new listener to you. I mean, I, I started listening last week. Uh -huh. And I can see so much of what you're saying is true. And I am a sheeple. I have sat on my rear end for years. I have done nothing because I have known, I, I don't know what to do. You tell me to get up and do something, and I agree with you, but I still don't know what to do. <laughs> what, what can you do for me? Well, if you keep listening to this broadcast, you'll find out what you can do. Tonight, what we're asking is that the listening audience tell us what they think we should do. That's the whole theme of tonight's broadcast. Some of them elect not to do that, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, we can't uh, force them to uh, come up with an answer. And, and generally, it's because they don't have an answer. Well, that, that's where I'm sitting, because I don't have an answer. I realize that we're, we're in deep crap. I mean, we are in big trouble. Yes, we are. And don't feel bad about being a sheeple, uh, Darlene. All of us. All of us. All yeah. of us were sheeple for most of our, our lives. I wasn't born uh, knowing any of the stuff that I talk about on this radio. It took me years to, to uh, straighten my act out and, and figure out what the truth was and then, and then get off my butt and do something. And uh, I'm doing something. Uh, not everybody can do what I'm doing, but everybody can do something. And, well, uh, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm willing to, to try anything. I mean, I spent my whole life listening to what other people told me I should do and what they thought was best for me and, and where where I should be at. And it's taken me my whole life to be, finally become my own person. 
and I realize that we are in trouble, but I don't know what to do. So I'm really hoping you've got the answers because I'm still listening. Well, we may not have all the answers, but we have some of the answers, and you'll be hearing those answers if you continue um, to listen to this broadcast. I can assure you. Now, we've been doing this for many, many years. There are people out there who started listening to this broadcast on May the 4th, 1992, which was the first time that I ever went on the air anywhere. And uh, I've given them uh, tons of things uh, to do, and many of them have decided to, to do some of those things, and other people are still sitting on their butt, waiting for somebody else to do it for them. Well, I, I know that, that I, I try not to let it affect me too much, but I am fearful. Uh, I, we have bought several guns. We've got lots of ammunition. We've got a lot of stuff, but I, we're one person. Mm -hmm. Well, I hear that all the time, but you have to remember that I'm just one person, too, and Jesus Christ was one person. And uh, Joseph Smith was one person, and Pontius Pilate was one person, and Caesar was one person, and uh, Napoleon was one person, and Genghis Khan was just one person. And, and those, each of those people, whether they did good or bad for the world, had a tremendous effect upon the world because of what they did. Well, you know, I think an awful lot of people are, Darlene. I think that you, when you said that, I think you, you spoke for an awful lot of people. Well, I, I haven't missed a program since I started, and I don't plan on missing one, so I'm going to keep listening and see if you can figure out where I'm at. <laughs> well, I don't know if I can figure out where you're at, but I, I think I can give you an awful lot of information to help you figure out where you're going and, and how you should be getting there and how you can help those of us who really want to save freedom, not just for this country, but for the whole world. You Thank see, if, you. If we fall, the world falls. Yep. Absolutely. And that, that is a very frightening situation. Yeah. Yes. Well, thank you and good night. You're welcome. Thanks, Arlene. Thanks okay, for well. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for your listening pleasure, we have my daughter, Dorothy, whom you know as Pooh. She's going to play her harmonica for you. And if you want to put your book right up there. All right. There you go. All right, baby. I'll play Mary Had a Little Laugh. Okay. Okay. Here we go. learning to play the harmonica, folks, and uh, she's reading the, the music from a book, and uh, tells her when to uh, do what to make the notes, you know, the way they're supposed to be, and it just looks like a bunch of, it's not sheet music, it's harmonica music, and uh, it looks like a, a code book, is what it looks yeah. like, <laughs> it really looks like a code book, it looks like she went to the National Security Agency and stole one of their code book, code book. I authenticate. Okay, I'll play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. This is for Allison if she's outside, if she's listening. Oh boy, right. she'll love that. That's her favorite. Okay.
Mom. Okay. What are you gonna do now? I'll do all Susanna. Okay, that's a good one. All right. That's my favorite, in fact. for the hour of the time. You're welcome. Okay, folks, we'll go back to the phone now. 520-333-4578. Oh, we missed something here. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to WBCQ, Monticello, Maine, USA. 520-333-4578 is the number. Telephone number. Give me those... Uh, Knives there. No, the other ones. <clears throat> Most of the knives are gone, folks. While we're waiting for a telephone call here, I'll tell you what we've got left. In case any of you still want to have one. And we're not going to uh, do any prices or anything like that. I'm just going to tell you what we've got here. In case uh, any of you have forgotten about it. We've got uh, two Snuffy Smiths. We've got one uh, Christmas knife with uh, the Virgin Mary and uh, little Jesus. We have, uh, don't blame me, I voted for Bush. <laughs> and we have one Tom Corbett Space Cadet Knife left. Good evening, you're on the air. Uh, yes, uh, Bill? Yes. Yeah, I was enjoying your uh, show, it's informative. Uh, I wanted to ask you about uh, this Freemasonry. Uh-huh. Uh, do you know, like, uh, is Billy Graham, I've been hearing that he is a Freemason. Billy Graham is a 33rd degree Freemason of the Scottish Rite, of the Southern Jurisdiction. Okay, Scott, that's what I he is a bona fide member of the Illuminati. Okay. So it is true. Okay. Absolutely true. Uh, also, one more thing. He is a uh, counterfeit Christian. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and the Pope now, is he involved in that? Is the Pope himself involved in it? Yeah. I have no evidence that the Pope is a Freemason. I yeah. do have a lot of evidence that uh, a lot of the Vatican staff and the uh, people who surround the Pope in the Vatican are Freemasons and members of other secret societies. Right, I've heard that too, as far as the bishops and everything. Oh, it's absolutely true. Uh, because uh, my wife and I were watching Satellite, uh, this is several years ago, and uh, we saw him, uh, what do you call him? He, you know, he's got the pontificate going with the audience or whatever. I'm not Catholic, so I don't really know. Okay, whatever it was, we saw him on TV, and he, he put his hands together in the most unusual manner. He looked like like the horned hand on one hand and put it across his other hand after he did this audience or whatever it was. I would have to see that. Right. I, I wish I'd had that on tape. It was, it was unbelievable. It was yeah. so I, chill down. You know. I, w- I would have to see that because that is definitely is a uh, is one of the, the, the signs. Okay. In other words, he made, uh, I, if I remember it right, yeah, I think he made a fist with his right hand and put the horns over it like a... Well, sure it, I would have to see it. Yeah. It doesn't do any good to describe it to me. Right, exactly. Because you saw, you it, it, it is prob- uh, what, what, what you saw, you may have misinterpreted, may have been one of the uh, the rituals of the Catholic Church. Oh, I, yeah, I don't really know. But I would have to see it. It sounds very close to one of the, the uh, okay. ritual secret signs of, of several of the, uh, of the uh, secret societies. See, look, I work in the, in the building trades, you know, you know, I've been working with these masons all my life, and I mean, you know, they always try to put you in the jackpot or use the signals on you, or, you know, you know. But uh, uh, you know, I just want to know. If well, you have to understand the building trade has absolutely nothing to do with Freemasonry. Right. I, I heard you say that, and it was very interesting because I had assumed that it was it started no. with the no, trade, not a, you know, but no. They want you to think that. They yeah, want I, you I to think that, that, but that's not true. It came out of the ancient mystery religions of all of the ancient peoples. Goes all the way back to the very beginning of the written history of the human race. And uh, you can find these secret societies and esoteric rituals and and, uh, mystery schools throughout the history of the human race long before there was any builders' guilds. And uh, that's just uh, just a cover that they use. Well, I'll tell you, you you brought to our attention uh, earlier tonight that uh, they... 
break the monarchies and everything. You know, it's the new world. I mean, it just... Yes, by giving the common man freedom in the United States of America, they demonstrated to men in nations all around the world that they could be free. Something that it was unthought of, unheard of. Nobody would even entertain the thought. And the next thing that happened is populations began to rise up at the instigation and the leadership of an underground movement from these secret societies, and they toppled the kings and queens from their thrones. You see, as long as the kings and queens had the ultimate power of life or death and ownership uh, of, of kingdoms, uh, they could never even aspire to even hope to have their world utopian government that they have always aspired to. Okay, great. And yeah, it's always in the guise of improving the lot of the of the common man or the poor man. And uh, and if and if you look at what happens to the common man or the poor man after they after they reach you know they they get their power, uh, it's absolutely amazing that anybody's still falling for this baloney. The French Revolution. <laughs> the French Revolution. Yeah. Example. Yeah. And you still, you're hearing some of the buzzwords today yeah. as they try to uh, implement the plan here. Now is the time, is one of them. <laughs> now is the time. Listen for that phrase. You'll hear it. You'll hear it, and you'll hear it from the most unsuspected mm -hmm. people that you can imagine. Good evening. You're on the air. Hi, Mr. Cooper. Yes, sir. I've been on your web page and have admired it greatly. Well, thank you. It took an awful lot of work, as you can probably imagine. Now, Mr. Cooper, I have a videotape of Secretary Hamry um, of reconstructing of our military command structure uh -huh. and how they are going to use uh, treaties to do, redo the command structure. Uh -huh. And I have it straight from their mouths. Could, could, uh, I was wondering could, if you'd be interested in having uh, a copy of that. I was just going to ask you if there was any way that we could get a copy. I would have, I would love to have a copy. And um, I paid, it was only showed one time on C-SPAN, and it was never shown again for that purpose of not wanting the public to be aware. I read your document, 7277, I believe it was. It wasn't my document. It was uh, written by the United States State, State Department. They did not give him the base. They did not give him the Presidio. Oh, what okay. they did is deactivate the Presidio. And, but before the Presidio was deactivated, they gave him a building on the base to use as his headquarters. Yes, sir. And okay. then when they deactivated the base, then, uh, he, of course, he kept that as his headquarters. Now, it seems to me that all this is not a coincidence. Oh, no, not at all. I'm doing my best. Um, I'm trying as hard as I can. <laughs> uh, do, do people realize that 60% of our commanders since 1992 have either been forced out or have retired and have been replaced by puppet commanders? Oh, yes. Uh, number one, they're members of secret societies. Number two, they uh, are willing to go along with the New World Order and, and, uh, and are actually, in fact, committing treason, going against their oath. And anybody who will not agree to these things or who does not belong uh, to the secret orders is riffed and forced out. This is unbelievable that we have congressmen. Well, most, most of the leadership is CFR members, 
But it seems to me that you have enough in Congress that got elected in 94 that would throw out these leadership like uh, uh, Mr. Jeffries, Mr. Uh, Chaffee from Rhode Island. He's all, like Mr. Chaffee's already uh, decided that he's going to go along with the Cato Treaty with, they're going to be forced by regulations to do away with all the jobs in this country and force the regulations on us to where all the jobs will definitely go overseas, which yeah, I, I, I wrote this in my book many years ago uh, that the goal for this country is uh, is a service economy. A well, service economy, you know, pays the lowest wages of all. You know, how that. could they get past past something like gas and NASA? And then I remember Mr. James Gold. I believe he died over in London, and he come out right before he died, and he says American people have to be aware. Fast track is about one world government where they're going to set up a court of the Americas to decide your trade issues. <laughs> yeah, we talked and about that on this broadcast. How could Congress uh, that are elected by their people... They don't care. The they don't care about the people. They have contempt for the people. I'm here. Oh, they have all their puppets now in our command structure throughout our Congress, and now they're going regionalism, where yeah. they're sticking people in to positions and to each county uh, throughout the United States. Well, they, they can't they can't lawfully do it. It goes against all the state constitutions. Uh, but they but, but where they can talk people into it, ignorant people who don't understand the law uh, accept it. Uh, and, and don't even realize that, that it violates the law. Have the citizens been shut down that much, sir? Oh, you better believe it. I believe How many people do you know that have read the Constitution for their state, much less the Constitution for the United States, and if they have read it, how many of them do you think that have read it understand what they wrote, what they read? Uh, I don't know, sir, but it seems like to me, uh, lately I live in Baltimore, Maryland, and that... Um, they are putting military people into our police force now to have a military mind when they stop you. Myself, I got stopped for a seatbelt, and I said, why are you guys enforcing a seatbelt? And this is the honest God's truth. And he, I said, I think you're taking freedom of choice away from me. And I said, what if the president would decide tomorrow? By the way, he called for two backup police officers when I said that. Oh, you scared, you scared him to death. You ask him a question. Uh, all three See, of he probably come. peed in his pants. And all three <laughs> of them come, sir, and this is the oddest guy's truth. I asked each member there, I said, if the president tomorrow would do away with the Constitution, would you enforce that? And each one of them said, yes, sir. Yeah. Unbelievable. It's not unbelievable. They're little robotons. They are... They are exactly the same mentality that Hitler uh, recruited for his stormtroopers. Well, I see where the UN is starting their own national youth movement, yeah. the environmental movement, all throughout the UN, and inundating all these laws and these regulations into our country. Hold on just a minute. i got to turn the tape over. Uh, they're inundating all these UN laws and regulations for our country. It's like we've been dominated by the U.N. for the last 50 years, and anything they want to do in the well, you, you, committees you, and reports, then it becomes law here. You just explained it yourself. If the United Nations is making mm -hmm. resolutions and passing laws that we must follow, does it not follow that we are a vassal state of the United Nations and not a sovereign free people? Yes, sir. It seems like to me they're going just like member has one vote. We have a vote the size of 80. And whether we like it or not, them, whatever they say goes, because we only have one vote. Yeah, that's why they're getting rid of our military and they want to disarm us, because mm -hmm. they know that there's going to come a point when we're going to, when everybody will understand what's happening, and uh, they don't want, they don't want us to be able to pick up a weapon and uh, take our country back. Well, I happen to be on the UN web pages yesterday, and all over 
over the radio broadcast and all over the uh, radio their page web page is talking about having a conference to do away with small arms and do it through the Department of Dis- Disarmament in this country. Yeah, I've been telling warning people for many years. Unbelievable. I feel like it's in God's hands now. No, it's not. It's really? on. It's on my hip. It's on your hip, sir. Yes, sir. I got a forty-five strapped to my hip right this moment, and I am prepared and willing to use it in defense of my freedom. I just watched a movie. Let, let me explain something to you and the listening audience. If you are not willing and ready to die for freedom, you cannot be free. You cannot have it. It cannot happen. You cannot be free if you are not willing to die for freedom. Well, isn't it that's the way. That's the way it works. Isn't it said that um, what surprises me, sir, if you go through history from day one, anybody that has had freedom has always lost it. Don't the American people see that? That they have so much lost their freedom. Well, uh, you gotta fight for it every once in a while, sir. Well, excuse me, nobody in this world has ever had freedom until the United States of America was created, and nobody has had it since. We're the only people upon the entire face of this earth who have ever been free. The Canadians did not ever have the freedoms that we have had. The English have never had the freedoms that we have had. No other people on the face of this earth has ever been free like the American people. So we are the first ones to ever be free, and we are the first ones who are going to give it up. I can't believe that they would go down without a rebellion in this country, and this, sorry to say this, but a spill of blood to protect the freedoms and liberties of every individual in this country. It's time for to tell them that we are rising up throughout this country little by little, one by one, and we are going to form a rebellion and take our country back, sir. I've already done that. I've, the United States of America is at war with me right this moment. Well, I, I am at war with with the the uh, the treasonous de facto government that has destroyed my constitutional Republican government. Down here, sir, last week in Hebron, Maryland, they had a little test. You might have heard about it. They had the Marine Corps down here. We went down and took actually videos and have the sheriff interview where they're going to confiscate a practice of confiscating weapons. Yeah. And we have the sheriff on tape admitting to that fact. We'll send you that tape too, sir. Great. Thank you. I want to. God bless you, sir. Well, God bless you too. And God bless America. Yes, sir. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for calling. Um. You know, I'm physically and completely at war with the traitors who have destroyed this country. I am a member of the militia. We constitute the militia for the United States of America, the Second Continental Army of the Republic. So, uh, you know, it started a long, long time ago, ladies and gentlemen. You're just playing catch up. Good evening. You're on the air. Hi, Bill. Hi. I just I want to thank you for what you're doing. Welcome back. Thank you. It's good to hear you again. This is the last voice of freedom in America. It's been a long time. Um, you know, you ask what, what we do. I, I don't broadcast, but uh, buy a lot of books. I've got a few of yours lined out. Um, by the way, I'm Joey from Virginia. Hi, Joey. Hi. Uh, I, I buy your books. Uh, me and my buddy share our uh, audio and video tapes with, uh, with people, anybody that will listen. Um, I've talked to people in the checkout line, you know, whether they want to hear it or not. Uh-huh. Sometimes it disturb a lot of people. Oh, I'm sure it does. <laughs> I'm, I'm used to that. <laughs> yeah, I've had some, some pretty, uh, pretty extreme confrontations. It's, it's, kind of, it's kind of fun in a way, you know. But I got turned on to this thing back in 74, and, um, you know, little by little, just learning learning what I could as time goes by, <laughs> and trying to trying to wake people up, mm-hmm. that's my ability, but I used to go to parties back in high school and talk about this stuff, and of course all my buddies 
just wanted to drink. Well, see, I was stupid back in high school. I was one of the buddies that wanted to party. <laughs> I was 16 years old and, and talked about the New World Order. And, and um, you know, I wonder now about all those people and, and where they are with this. Is, we're watching all this evolve right in front of our faces. And uh, I yeah. know that I planted some seeds back then. It's always amazed me that, that few people can see what's happening. And the reason they can't see it is they, they don't know what it's supposed to be. They have no idea. What it's supposed yeah, what what things are supposed to be like. Yeah. They have no absolutely no conception. They don't even know that they've lost a lot of their freedom. Well they also have no conception of what things are. They do know that something's wrong and they do know that the government is dangerous because they're scared to death of the government. They are they are fearful. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, like I said, whether they want to hear it or not, but um, anymore, I mean, it's so many people just refuse to even look at it. They will until it begins to hurt them terribly, and that time is not far off. Right. It's very, very close. Well, I would just urge everyone out there that's listening. In fact, you're so close I can smell it. <laughs> I can smell it. Urge Doyle went to the supermarket. They thought he was me because he was wearing his his uh, weapon on his hip. One of the uh, what, one of the checkout boys uh, asked asked one of the other ones is, said, "Is that a real gun?" What did he say, Doyle? Of course, that's Mr. Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> is that right? But of course, it's a real gun. It's Mr. Cooper. <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah, it is. It is hilarious. In, in a country where we are given the right to keep and bear arms, people see you wearing a pistol or carrying a rifle. Must be a nut. And, and uh, they get scared. Like that rent a cop. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. well. But go ahead. Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I heard earlier caller say something about hanging. And, you know, I, I call in a local radio show periodically. And I, I actually mentioned that last week. Um, Mentioned what? Well, that, that, you know, the radio talk show host was asking what we what we thought we should do yeah. with this Clinton situation. And, of course, uh, you know, I, I think the man's got a right to his, his private life. Um, but... Uh, I don't believe that there's a, there, there's a crime between consenting adults where sex is concerned. I do believe that certain things are immoral, but that's between that person and God. You know, I'd have been fired for that. Well, you might have if you'd have got caught, but I'm telling you right now that whether it's right or wrong, there's Americans doing it all across this country. Right. The, 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 the hypocrisy is amazing. My comment was that uh, the man's well, done enough. Uh, it's, it's not the sex that we should be upset about. They're consenting adults. They were both over the age of consent. It's the lies the under oath. Right. And the treason that's being conducted accepting campaign funds from a foreign nation whose ideology is alien and enemy to the United States of America. A communist country and selling them and giving them secrets. Everybody knows military it. Military secrets. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows it. I don't understand why it's not completely obvious to everyone. But if we, you know, if we started hanging traitors, uh, like, you know, like it's supposed to be. Well, we're Americans, and we can't do that. Right. You know why we can't do that. And See, I'm not a hypocrite. I'm telling you that if we're going to get somebody for a crime, first you have, the, have to have the evidence they committed the crime. Right. You must indict them. They must have a fair trial. And oh, be judged by a jury of their peers. Then if they're found guilty, they must be given the penalty prescribed in the law. All right. If American citizens start running through the streets, 
um, executing people, then uh, I got to tell you something. You better go back and study the French Revolution. You don't want that to happen. Oh, no, no. I'm you do you. not want that to happen. I'm definitely. telling you that I can see it coming, but I don't want it to happen, and I don't want anybody to do it. I want things to be done under the law. I want a constitutional Republican government restored, and I want traitors arrested. I want them held for trial. I want them tried by a jury of their peers, and if they're found innocent, apologize and let them go home. If they're found guilty, then they should suffer whatever penalty the law prescribes for that particular crime. I'm definitely in favor of doing it in a lawful manner. Good. Uh, it'll never go through the, the Senate because so many of them are complicit. Yeah. You should have seen the look on the local FBI guy's face when I told him that someday he may have to stand as the defendant in a trial being tried for treason for what he has done as a member of the FBI, for what they did at Waco, Texas. He says, oh, I wasn't there. I said, I'm sorry, sir, but if I was a member of an organization, whether I was there or not, and that organization did that, you would arrest me, try me, and execute me under the conspiracy laws as being just as guilty as those who were there that did it. And I'm telling you right now, that same law applies to you, and the blood drained right out of his face. Well, I bet. Bill, I just, I got to tell you, man, it's just so good to hear you again. Well, thank you. Thank you, sir. Good to be here. <laughs> Good to have you. <laughs> well, you, you better listen to me while I'm here, because i got to tell you right now, they want me dead so bad they can taste it, and one of these days they're going to come up here to do that job. Well, I've been listening. I listened to you in WWCR. I, would list, I listened to you, I think it was 99.55, some, some frequency. After, after you left WWCR, I, I, w I went through uh, pain. Yeah, I was on 9.955. Uh, that's where I was at. Reception was not so good, but I often listened anyway. That's because I was educating Castro, and he didn't want to hear it. <laughs> so he was jamming me. Um, it, it was not just me. That's a Cuban freedom station, and, and uh, everybody on there is telling Castro all about the evils of socialism and communism. And uh, so he jammed it. Well, that, things got pretty nasty last Thursday night. He got squeezed out here. Well, there, there, that had nothing to do with jamming or squeezing out. There was a tremendous magnetic storm uh, that, that just, yeah, wiped out all communications everywhere. Well, I was getting some really heavy Spanish uh, right above you and, and actually right below. Somebody was coming in really, really strong. <laughs> but, uh, they used to do that to me on WWCR, too. When I get going strong and develop a big listening audience, they put two strong stations on each side of me and, and tried to uh, wipe it out that way. But WWCR was so strong it didn't work, and WBCQ is so strong it's not going to work either. Well, I will listen to you as long as you're there, buddy. Okay. And I, I just I want to ask all the listeners. Okay? I'll be here as long as I'm alive. Buy, doing... buy Bill Cooper's book and give it away every chance you get. Thanks for being there. Well, thanks for your call. Thanks for calling. Five two zero three 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 four five seven eight is the number. And uh, you want to? Uh, good evening, you're on the air. Hi, Bill. Rick in Ohio. How Hi, are you? Hi, Rick. Good. Listen, we've been uh, Barbara and I have been sitting here talking about what. Uh, we got your card. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Just you're got welcome. it. Welcome got it today. Got it today. Ready. We've been talking a little bit about your issue tonight, uh -huh. and. Uh, I want to share with uh, you and the listeners a couple of things that developed in, in our life. I know we talked a little bit about this at the conference when I when I met with you and talked to you. Uh -huh. You know, the long and the short of what's happened to us, you know, we've been through a lot of turmoil and problems personally and professionally, as you know. And um, I don't know. I think you reach a point where looking at who the enemy is is, uh, is one of those uh, events that, that kind of settled in on us. And sobering, isn't it? Yeah. We kind of view the mystery uh, Babylon religion, uh, we view the enemy as a spiritual force. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that uh, we have to be active physically, we have to be active socially, we have to be active personally, proactive, very active. But we also know that we're fighting a war uh, 
that we believe is, is spiritually based or spiritually driven. We talk about the forces that are at work, and we talk about uh, uh, terms like good and evil or good and bad or plus and minus or however we want to define it. Mm-hmm. But in the end, uh, we had to make a decision about where to draw force or draw strength from. And we, but we came to believe that we can't fight a spiritual war uh, with material tools if, alone. If you're not spiritually armed. Yeah. Well, we're not spiritually armed in the material world. However, uh, we have, at least in our lives anyway, and I don't know, maybe in some of the listeners this, is, this has occurred, but using um, or, or, or getting into a, uh, a spiritual state I guess it's, it's helped us greatly. In that regard, we've drawn strength from that. Mm-hmm. And we basically look for uh, marching orders, and then we get busy. Similar mm-hmm. to what you said, that you, you you read the Bible, you read the words of, of, uh, of Jesus Christ, uh, you say your prayers, but then you get busy. Yeah. And you begin working. And sometimes you don't know where you're going. It's that feeling like you can't see the forest for the trees. Mm-hmm. And yeah. you feel a, a guiding hand that moves you through to some uh, conclusion. And I want to share something with you. Um, remember I told you about all that bar association stuff that was going on? Yeah. Well, today I got word that uh, all charges were dismissed. Fantastic. Yeah, and we've been, uh, I, I did exactly what you suggested. We mounted an assault. Uh, we went back after it aggressively. We didn't sit back and do nothing, but we did, uh, we did pray on it. Uh, and we, we ask for the wisdom and understanding uh, to do uh, the right thing, to do in our, in, at least in our spiritual uh, framework, God's will. Uh-huh. And then we, we just got busy, and we just kept working on it, similar to what the way I, I see you do, and, uh, and, and your, your tenacity to continue, even though sometimes you don't even know where you're going and what you're doing, but you know that if you're not doing it right, that you expect uh, to not succeed in that direction. But you don't quit. Right. You, know, you continue on. That's correct. And I, I think that's, if, if there's anything that I want to impart to the listeners, it's, it's not to give up. It's to continue to move through space and time uh, aggressively and, and positively with the, with the sense of, of who you are and, and, and where you are, but in relation, in, in proper perspective. I think you, if all of us... Uh, you must put all your trust in God. Yes. With no doubts whatsoever. No doubts. And then move forward and know that you'll be where you are supposed to be, doing what you are supposed to be doing at the time you are to be doing it, and have absolute confidence in that. Yes, you must. And never stop. Never hesitate. Just yeah. continue on. It doesn't mean you don't get depressed and you don't get confused, but... Yeah. If you can't do that, then you're lying about your faith in God. Right. Right. Yeah. And I think there's a there's a tranquil feeling about that. I, I talk to clients all the time about that, and they come in so confused and disturbed, and I say, why are you so anxious? And they say, well, because I already have all these problems. I have all these worries. And now you're dumping on me and telling me about this uh, New World Order business. I said, wait a second. Are you a believer in something? I ask them if they have a religious affiliation. And if they say yes, I try to pin it down a little bit. But I do say, do you have faith? And they say yes. And I say, well, wait a minute. If you have faith, then you must trust in that belief, right? And they say, well, yes. I say, well, if you're trusting in that belief and you're not trusting in yourself, why are you anxious? What's to be anxious about? And they kind of look at me with a quizzical look on their face and say, gee, maybe I don't have as much faith as I, as I thought. At least they're honest. Yeah, at least they're honest. At and least I think they're that's honest. That's the beginning. See, I never could figure out if uh, somebody would stand in front of me and tell me that they were a Christian, uh, but they couldn't help me because they might get on somebody's list. Yeah. I, I, and I'd look at them and say, are you afraid to die? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. How can you be a Christian if you're afraid to die? How can, you know, uh, and... Uh, you know, we're not trying to push any anybody's religion down anybody's throat. We're just talking about right. this particular part of religious belief. If you truly believe and trust and put your faith in God, 
how in the world could you be afraid to die? Right. I would be afraid to live. Right. <laughs> That's exactly right. It, it, if I couldn't trust in God, I would be afraid to live. Exactly. That's precisely correct. And, you know, all religion seems to boil down to three basic tenets, at least on the side of the ledger that, that we believe we are on. Uh, like I said, we oppose the ACLU and others because we believe they're on the other side of the ledger. Uh, the, the, we call the negative, call it what you want. We're on the positive side. I don't know. We have different... Uh, yeah, don't you think it's strange that an organization that pretends to be on the side of law and order and, and to protect the constitutionally protected uh, rights of the people would actually in their literature and in their speech, deny the existence of the second article in the amendment? Right. It's a, it's a, <laughs> fraud. They're a, they're a fraud. They are a fraud. There are so many people. Yeah. And and he, it's just unbelievable. I, I look at this reference frame and I say, look, there's, there's three basic building blocks of, 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 of spirituality. And I don't, I, I, when I ask folks, I say, well, do you have a, a, a belief? I'm not trying to pin them down to a particular belief. I want to know if they have a belief, and the belief all boils down to three basic elements: faith, belief in in, in that uh, in that system, hope or trust, which is which means giving yourself over to it completely, and then charity or loving this being, this creator, this God, if, if you will, above all, and, and loving your neighbor as yourself. And my God, that's that's the golden rule, and, and we do that by obeying and entering the, the material world in, in stewardship and, and helping one another. It's just, I mean, if we all did that, we would have, uh, we'd, have a, we'd have a much better world, I'm sure. Yeah. But uh, you see people spinning in cul-de-sacs, and uh, I think one thing I would encourage the listeners to do is turn off the, uh, turn off the idiot box and the talking heads and, and do a lot more reading, thinking, listening, helping yeah. those who are trying. I, I think you made a good point when you said a very small percentage actually stand up and do something is discouraging to me because I, I know what you're saying. I mean, maybe you've got 1% of the listeners who will really send. But you see, that sounds like such a small number, but that's really all it takes that's because the rest, takes. the rest of them are not engaged in the battle. Right. They're not there. They are not a threat to either side. They are the flotsam and jetsam of any conflict. Yeah, and they are at the mercy of the conflict yeah. and of the victim. You, I mean, there, is, there is sand we're sifting. <coughs> if, if we find one pearl in the sand, if this message reaches one pearl that can uh, can make a difference, uh, it, it, it's worth it. It's worth it. I know you, you've got to get tired sometimes. Well, I'm exhausted <laughs> today. <laughs> I've already talked about that. I don't have any energy level at all right now. It's like uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, it's about point <laughs> one. <laughs> and point one. Yeah. Let, me, let me leave you with one comment on uh, a thought on this uh, Ken Starr. Okay. Um, you know, I've thought a lot about this. We've talked about this in our, our little uh, group here in uh, northeastern Ohio that to get together and talk about all these things. But this Ken Starr, to me, he worked for uh, the Illuminati. He worked for Clinton. He worked for these people. He protects he shelters, he harbors, he shapes. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're now down to shaping this attack on, on the presidency of the United States into a manageable crisis, which is couched in sexuality. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, it's so obvious. I mean, the main issues have been left on the sidelines. And you, you pointed it out a number of times in the broadcast here the last few days, this, this business with China, uh, the, the secrets, the, the, the real treason... Uh, that's not uh, not even talked about the involvement of uh, of Hillary Clinton and the things she was involved in right before the Murrah building was detonated. Yeah, financing. Uh, was aware of that it, it was buried. Uh, the, the, the shredding of, of evidence, the gathering of evidence, and, and the losing of evidence. Uh, this is this is a staged event. This guy's a player, and and I don't know anybody who can't see that at this point with what's going on in the media. To me, is just completely missed. Uh, Mr. Bow here. I think Hegel is smiling from ear to ear wherever he's at. He's got to be grinning from chin to chin. He's so happy. Ooh, look. Boy, I never knew it would work this well when I wrote it. But looking down there, they, oh, they make me proud. Oh, it's amazing. 
Yeah, listen, uh, I wanted to ask you, did, did, did you understand why, exactly why I told you to stop playing the game with the Bar Association and attack them viciously? Yes. Thank you. Well, you, you're that welcome. The issue was raised on contract, and an issue and a threat was brought uh, about using their own systems, which you and I uh, <laughs> graciously call the federal court system against uh -huh. them, uh -huh. uh, interfering with the right to contract. Yeah. Uh, I have a right as a sovereign citizen of the United States of America. Uh, I hold the highest office in the land, not the bar. Yep. And, and I have a right to contract with my clients, and their interference with that right gives, gives me the right to go into federal court and enjoin them from doing so. Mm -hmm. I think that's been a chill down from the spine. I bet it did, too. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yes. I appreciate that uh, very much. You're, you're, it took a while for it to sink in, Bill, but you, know, you, you plant these seeds and like I say, we keep you and your family in our prayers every day. Uh, we're, we're at war. I agree with you. Uh, we are at war. Yes, we are. We hope that this be, it, it remains a non-shooting war, but uh, I, and I know how you feel about that. I, I do feel that that's what they want. They want us in the streets shooting one another uh, so they can enslave us. I think if we call their bluff and we educate enough people, on the use of the dialectic, if people begin thinking in dimensional thought, three-dimensional thought instead of one-dimensional thought, that they can think and understand uh, thesis, antithesis, and synthesis, creating problems, destabilizing, and, and planting uh, seeds and controlling. If they can do that successfully, they can think through these problems and not play into it. You, you hit it right on the head with Y2K. It's not Y2K. That's not the issue. It's how people react to the Y2K problem that's the issue. Absolutely. So, hey, your prayers are with the, uh, our prayers are with you. Uh, hang in there. Uh, you guys are doing a great job. I, I want you to, want you to keep, keep the faith, and uh, we'll try to round up as many listeners as we can. And, hey, listeners, support this effort. Support this effort. There's no other voice out there that is doing what Bill and Doyle and Bill's family is doing and are willing to sacrifice as much as they are for this cause. With that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let somebody else come in. Bill? Well, thank you, Rick. God bless you. you. Take care of yourself thank and you. uh, take care of the family. And our love to Barbara. You too. And thank you for calling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, folks, um, there, is a, there is a rule in war. Whoever decides they are going to take the defensive side of the war has lost the battle when they make that decision. They've lost. They've lost the war, as a matter of fact. Good evening, you're on the air. There are times when, uh, when, when you must assume a defensive position temporarily, but that cannot be the method that you decide to fight the war. You must attack, because that's the only way that you can ever win. Good evening. Hello, Bill. This is Ron from Ohio. Hi, Ron. Hey, about a year ago, I sent you a package about this team-based management deal. The people would only open up their eyes and look what's happening in the factories. Then they would know what's happening on with this country, too. Doyle. And, um, you, you have the microphone, yeah. Doyle. Doyle knows all about that <laughs> team management baloney. Well, I was just for my job because of uh, not signing my name to this piece of paper. Yeah. And I've been trying to fight this for about a whole year. I sent you all the information. I don't know if you received it or what, but I've been... Sue them. Huh? Sue them. Go on the attack. You weren't listening to me a few minutes ago. Well, I've been attacking them. No, no, no. You're not attacking them until you sue them. Well, I've been trying to. Bar Association won't even back me up on this either. Through the Bar Association. When I go to court, I go to court myself. I don't take a lawyer with me. That's a way to lose. Yeah, I know. I've been trying different ways here. But I with my radio station, too, trying to wake up people. I spent all my money and everything trying to wake up the people in this area. They don't realize that this big factory is getting set up for a safe labor camp. They have their own electric power. And about 10 miles down the road, there's a big steel factory, which I believe they have maybe a microwave oven in there that's going to kill people, too. You know, it's, it's, it's possible. Well, now don't go off the deep end. I'm not going off the deep end, but it's kind of funny how things are happening because there's been a lot of deaths at the steel factory here, too. Well, what you need to do is, is find documentation and proof, not, not make assumptions based yeah. upon on, on what 
what might turn out later to be not not real um, real um, logical thinking. Right. That's, that's understandable. I deal with truth and facts. That's how I expose everything. And through this whole thing, I've been um, researching since '92 on this team-based management, and and I have all the lawyers. I have everybody I've been around, even with the companies, telling them that they might be making the biggest mistake. And through this whole deal, I exposed 13 members of Northwestern Ohio of the, of the Illuminati. Well, good for you. Yeah, and uh, I've been watched quite a bit. I have helicopters come over my house and hovered and everything. But I am still out there fighting because what is more important is being free because God gave us that gift. You're right. That's yeah. the most important thing in the world. If you're not free, then nothing else can be for you. That's right. And I'm glad that you're back on the air. I missed you for about a whole year, you know, but still I play your tapes on my radio station. Good. And they're trying to circulate, trying to figure out where the, where the transmission is coming from. They never figure it out. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I mean, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. My whole life has changed since they tried to draft me into Vietnam. Well, good, good for you. Yeah, you know, and I've been a rebel. And I'm still going to be a rebel. I and I'm not going to go no prison. They're going to have to put a bullet in my head before they take me to prison because I got a friend that's in prison, and he's been set up for murder because of this establishment. Well, I can't comment on that because I don't know what anything about what you're talking about. Well, uh, you know John from Michigan. Oh yeah, I know. Hey, he's my friend. John couldn't have killed anybody in his whole life. I know. I know John. John um, uh, was a gentle soul. There is no way that John could have ever hurt anyone. And I, I just, know that. It just could not possibly have happened. Yeah, they do a lot of crooked things in that. And uh, I've been doing a lot of research into that area, too, trying to help him out. But he's up in northern Michigan someplace now. Yeah. And he's still alive, as far as I know. Well, that's good. You know, but... Uh, yeah, John. I can't believe the people. John was they, framed. John was framed. There's no doubt about that. Oh okay. yeah, I know. Anybody, I, anybody who knew John uh, uh, at all would know that John couldn't possibly hurt anybody. Uh, and uh, and and it's you know it's <laughs> I just absolutely 